Cause we coming out these graves It's the same as our redeemer Father sent his only son We got enough as people Can't forget the chosen one The nation's on the run You better be afraid Repent while you can Get on your knees and pray Let the records play Rappers glorify thug And that's why we hate each other Killing brothers by the dust It's all been a ploy From the streets to the streets It's almost over now You can call me Jacob C I'm not a thug I'm not a thug I'm not a goon I'm not a goon I know it can't get hard, you gotta push through. Have faith in God, you gotta push through. We know it's rough, you gotta push through. When things get tough, you gotta push through. Hold on for the ride, you gotta push through. Cause it ain't no suicide, you gotta push through. You may be sick, you gotta push through. Those no such things quit, you gotta push through. Hey, going through some things. I was kind of tough in the days, fear and rain. I feel the pain. Just trying to maintain and keep myself together. Thoughts are blowing out my brain. It's a damn shame. I'm used to being up, but now I'm down. And I'm looking for my friends, no one around. Now, what am I supposed to do? I got some out to feed. Got a virtuous chick, yes she bad, yes she bad. Treat it like a queen, touch the class, touch the class. Got a virtuous chick, yes she bad, yes she bad. Need her on my team, got my bag, got my bag. Got a virtuous chick, yes she bad, yes she bad. Treat it like a queen, touch the class, touch the class. Got a virtuous chick, yes she bad, yes she bad. She gon' hold your boy down like a flag, like a flag. Hey, she put it with knowledge, yeah, yeah. 
see the girl like can't compare. Focusing on vanity. I wonder why I don't get nowhere. But I thank the Lord, beautiful woman that he gave to me. Protect the cover with my love. Canopy, canopy. I know without her ain't no telling where I be. Watch me go from boy to man on bending knees. Pray. Take her through some hell in and out of jail. State to state, in and out of hotel. Really didn't have nobody yes to call. Out of what's in, could've left in. Stay with me through my flaws. <laughs> and I'ma love her till I die. Till I die. Treat her like a queen. Cause she's the apple of my eye. Got a virtuous chick. Yeah, she bad. Yeah, she bad. Treat her like a queen. Touch the class. Touch the class. Got a virtuous chick. Yeah, she bad. Yeah, she bad. Need her on my team. Got my bag. Got my bag. Got a virtuous chick. Yeah, she bad. Yeah, she bad. Treat her like a queen. Touch the class. Touch the class. Got a virtuous chick. Yeah, she bad. Yeah, she bad. She gon' hold your boy down like a flag. Like a flag. I can't help but think about her all the time. And I love the way she love the Lord, so divine. So divine. Had to make a mind, told her you're my lady, you're my lady. Especially when she told me that she had my baby. Woo. And living color, girl, you know you rock my world. Rock my world. I thank you for my son and two beautiful girls. I do, I do, I do. Tell me I'm my worst and brought out the best in me, the best in me. With you, I wanna go old and leave a legacy, legacy. I see you in the Bible, Proverbs 31. That's you right there. Can't no other compare, cause she's second to none. Uh -uh. Let's make it last forever, yeah, eternally, eternally. Cause I can be your man for eternity. Got a virtuous chick, yeah, she bad, yeah, she bad. Treat it like a queen, touch the class, touch the class. Got a virtuous chick, yeah, she bad, yeah, she bad. Need her on my team, got my bag, got my bag. Got a virtuous chick, yeah, she bad, yeah, she bad. Treat it like a queen, touch the class, touch the class. Got a virtuous chick, yeah, she bad, yeah, she bad. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. In the kitchen, got my drink. On the mission, got my drink. It's a feast, got my drink. With my peace, I got my drink. In the kitchen, got my drink. On the mission, got my drink. It's a feast, got my drink. With my peace, I got my drink. Let me get that hen over there. Hen. Cause the beat got me out of my chair. chair. Got my hands in the air. air. Cause I really don't care. Nah. I ain't gotta go to work. work. But I'm about to go to church. church. Fellowship with the saints. Saint. And I'ma grab me a drink. Yeah. Let me try them green. green. See, ain't nothing unclean. Nope. Ain't gotta worry about the law. law. Cause everybody keep the law in the kitchen. Got my drink. drink on a mission. Got my drink. drink. It's a feast. Got my drink. drink. With my pee, I got my drink. drink. In the kitchen. Got my drink. drink. On a mission. Got my drink. drink. It's a feast. Got my drink. drink. With my pee, I got my drink. drink. Hey, let me get that hen over there. Hen. Cause the beat got me out of my chair. chair. Got my hands in the air. Yeah. Cause I really don't care. No. We've been waiting for the feast, feast. Plus, you know we like to eat, eat. Take a big strike of pole, pole. Then head to the flow, flow. Everybody so clean, clean. Ordained by the king, king. And we know it ain't a sin, sin. So let me get that gin. In the kitchen, got my drink. drink. On the mission, got my drink. drink. It's a feast, got my drink. drink. With my pee, I got my drink. drink. In the kitchen, got my drink. On a mission, got my drink. drink. It's a feast, got my drink. drink. With my pee, I got my drink. drink. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after. 
for oxygen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. In the kitchen, got my drink. On the mission, got my drink. It's a feast, got my drink. With my pee, I got my drink. In the kitchen, got my drink. On the mission, got my drink. It's a feast, got my drink. With my pee, I got my drink. Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. And his mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. And his mercy endureth forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is coming from Psalms 8. Verses 1 through 9. Our Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the pass of the seas. Our Lord, our Lord, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. I just read again Psalms 8, verses 1 through 6. Verses 1 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we have a seat selection. Check one. Have a Sabbath, fam.
Hey, y'all, come on.
Y'all give him another round of applause. Our sound crew came a little early today, about, uh, about 10.30 today. And they uh, is working on the stuff to get the sound fixed. So y'all get them a round of applause also. <laughs> y'all know everything we do around here is voluntary. So we don't force nobody to do anything. For it. So for them to take that upon themselves to get in here and get it straightened out, especially being a young group of guys, uh, we definitely appreciate that. So we're going to get into the word today, as you can see from the title of the class. It's called uh, Biblical Black History. And um, we're going to dig a little deeper into the word regarding our history. Because, you know, for the most part, we do have, a, uh, in America at least, we have a, a month they call Black History Month. And that whole 28 days is a time that's set aside to uh, kind of talk about our history. Y'all want to talk to Brother Elijah? Because he called him. <laughs> we in class, Brother Elijah. I'm going to talk to you other class, brother. I'm up here teaching. <laughs> uh, but we are, uh, you know, for the most part in, in February, we have... Um, you know, a month set aside where they talk about everything that happened to us as far as just being in America. And um, that's about as far as it goes. So we, we want to look at that and dig a little deeper because, you know, we as a people do have a rich history. And it's more than us, uh, more to it than us just being slaves. You think, you think based on on what we've been taught about us as a people. That's all we know is uh, what, hap what happened to us coming off the slave ships. And as you all know, we deal with a whole lot of lessons. <clears throat> you know, we deal with great tribulation. We deal with um, things dealing with your morals and values and stuff like that and uh, salvation. We deal, deal with everything, you know. But just like we deal with those, those things and talk about those things that are in the Bible, something else is in the Bible which is very important, which is black history. So we don't spend a lot of time on black history because the Bible itself is black history. That's what uh, we haven't been taught. I remember, I can remember clearly when I was a kid, I really didn't like uh, history that much. I, I mentioned that several times because they really didn't talk about any good things when it came to us as a people. When I was in school, you know, American history was about the Gentiles. World history was about the Gentiles. And any time it came to talking about the Negro, and I say Negro uh, because I'm not talking about Africans. African Negroes, if you don't know, not the same people, two totally different people, even though we had a skin color but they were a part in selling the black man into captivity. Two different groups of people. But I can just remember all the different things they would talk about in American history and world history. It would always be things, in a sense, glorifying themselves. And anytime it talked about us, I couldn't find anything good about us. The only thing I could find was uh, not good, was that we came here on slave ships, um, we were sold. They would even show pictures in the history books of us being on the slave blocks. And it would say Negroes for sale. See, nowadays they don't teach that that much. You know, uh, you have some kids don't even know that we went on, uh, went into slavery by ships. And that's why it's good that the Lord left the Bible here, because regardless of what they try to do, the world try, tries to do to hide it, he left it in the Bible, you know. But I saw those things. I saw a lot of negative things about us. And um, so I really wasn't interested. I wasn't interested in world history. I don't know how I passed it. I don't know how I passed American history because I just didn't like it at all. If I, know, if I knew what I know now, if I would have known then what I know now, I would have probably dealt with school a whole lot more different, you know. Because the crazy thing about it is we looked at coming up, we talked about Alexander the Great, you know, and 
God had already told us about that in Daniel chapter 7. Mm -hmm. You know, but for the most part, they never tied us to the Bible. Never tied the Negro to the Bible, which is why we had no idea of who we are. You know, and some of us, for the most part, come up in a time where we were told that we don't have to read the Old Testament. Now, even though that was said, I still would wonder, you know, it kind of left a, a blank, you know, questions in my mind, why we can't read the Old Testament? You know, and I used to wonder, you know, I would think something was hidden. And clearly, we're going to see why it was hidden, why, why we were told to stay out of the Old Testament. You know, we looked at the New Testament coming up, you know, in the churches nowadays, they teach you about the New Testament. And mainly, and everything you're learning about is things that's going to happen in the future about God coming back, you know, and salvation coming and stuff like that. But they never told us about our past. And that's what we was missing. And I just look at some of the, the generation now today. If you teach them who they are, if you show them according to the Bible who they are, then a lot of this stuff wouldn't be going on, especially with us. I know we have a lot of killings going on, police shooting us down like we animals. But at the same time, you can't, you can't really look at them without looking at ourselves, because we're killing ourselves too, ain't we? Mm -hmm. You know? So it's like nobody has respect for us at all, including ourselves. But if you look inside the Bible, raise the children in the Bible, and show them who they are according to the word, then, hey, things will be a whole lot different. We come from a, a line of kings and priests, sisters and brothers. You know, we're not just slaves. And we're going to look at that in the Bible. But go to Revelation 2 right quick. Revelation 2, and we're going to take our time and go through this. We don't have to wait till Black History Month to teach something on black history, because like I say, the Bible is black history in itself, and it's just so happened that, hey, let's just look at it. Let's just look at it, because the Lord is dealing with his people from Genesis all the way to Revelation, sisters and brothers. And if you try to deal with the Bible without dealing with God's people, then, hey, you ain't going to be able to make it into the kingdom. I'm, that's just what it is. That's just like Jesus told the woman at the well. He said, you worship, you know not what. We know we worship for what? Salvation is of who? The Jew. The Jew, sisters and brothers. And the Jew is the black man that's been scattered in the worldwide captivity. Just a name that cover, for the most part, all the tribes, even though we have individual tribes. You know, but Paul was a Benjamite, right? But he also called himself the Jew, because that was just almost like a blanket name for the 12 tribe, mainly Judah, Levi, and Benjamin, once once the 12 tribes split. But Revelation, Revelation 2 and 10, go and read that for me. What does it say? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day uh -huh. and heard behind me a great voice. Revelation 2 and 10? I'm sorry, 9. I'm sorry. Revelation 2 and 9. 2 and 9? Uh-huh. My fault. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, John, who also am your brother. Revelation 2 and 9. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I know thy works and thy tribulation uh -huh. and the poverty. Mm-hmm. You was there. You got it. Uh, this part is ripped out. Of it's it's ripped out? Uh, yeah. Y'all, we going to bow here and pray for Anthony right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the part it's ripped out, man. Yeah, it's ripped out of my Bible, man. Hey, that, that means he's been reading his Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see. You. I see his baptism buddy that came and rescued him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Oh, man. It's all good, man. Ah, uh, you go ahead, bro. I know thy works and tribulation and uh, poverty, mm -hmm. but thou art rich. So notice what he said. He said, I know your, your works, your tribulation and poverty, because when you identify this people who the Lord is talking about, that's mainly what covers them, for the most part, during this time. It's going to change eventually. But like you said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. What else? But thou art rich. But thou art rich. Now, like I said, we have a rich history, and we do physically have that as well. But overall, the word of God, sisters and brothers, you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to top that. You know, and that's why, he, that's why he turned around and say that. He said, look, I know your works, the tribulation and poverty. But right after that, he said, but thou art rich. Because the Lord gave us the word. He gave it to Israel. And look, you can have all the money in the world, all the riches in the world, but at the end of the day, if you don't have this word to sustain you, all that stuff don't matter, sisters and brothers. But us as a people, that's what he gave. He gave us the word. This is why we're rich. Go ahead and read. What does it say? 
and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and uh -huh. are not. Right, and you also, on the other hand, have somebody calling themselves Jews, and they are not. And it's not us, because we just now start waking up recently, you know, uh, I mean, heavily like this over the past 10, 15 years. You had a few. Like, the Lord always keep a remnant, you know, but that ain't been something popular that's been, you know, proclaimed from us at all until recently. So you got to look at who has been calling themselves Jews all this time. And this is who the Lord is talking about. He say, look, and when I say talking about, he's talking, when he said, uh, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, he's identifying somebody else. Mm -hmm. See, we're the ones that experience the tribulation and poverty, and at the same time, we rich. But on the other hand, there's somebody else out here perpetrating, out here acting like they're God's people, and they're not. What do you say they are? Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. Right, but they are the synagogue of Satan, sisters and brothers. But the point is, look, we are the ones that God gave the word to. And before any type of physical riches, any type of, you know, material things, the riches that we have is the word of God, sisters and brothers. So we're going to look at this. They go over to Exodus 3, and we're just going to kind of see how we became a nation of people, sisters and brothers. Because we were, like I said, we were uh, priests, which we are today, which most of us don't know. Even though we're in a bad condition, even though we've been sent off into captivity, as slaves, as, as captives, that don't change our position in the eyes of God. We are still the priests, sisters and brothers. And this is why we catch so much hell, because we don't take our job serious like we should have. We're getting back to it now. We're turning back to God now. That's how you know the world about to come to an end, because the Lord is on the way, and his people waking up all over the place. But at the same time, look, a lot of this wouldn't have happened if we just would have been obedient and stayed on the job like the Lord commanded us in the first place. But Exodus 3, pick this up in verse 7. This is when the Lord about to come to Moses because, you know, Israel at this time is in bondage to the Egyptians, sisters and brothers. And now the Lord is getting ready to send Moses. He's going to use him as a deliverer to bring Israel out of this captivity. So Exodus 3. Pick this up in verse 7. Go and read it. What does it say? And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, uh -huh. and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, mm -hmm. for I know their sorrows. Right. So look at this because, you know, the crazy thing about the world at the time we live in today, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, we're still in slavery. You know, we're in slavery right now just like our forefathers was. And the Lord saw the hard bondage. He saw the treatment of his people back then, and he came up with a way to deliver them. But likewise, we're in captivity now today, and God see everything that's going on. He's going to deliver us once again, sisters and brothers. But he says that, right? He said, look, and the Lord said, I have surely, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. What else? And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Mm -hmm. For I know their sorrow. Go ahead. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land, up out of that land, mm -hmm. unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, mm -hmm. unto the place of, of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Uh huh. Go ahead. Now therefore, <laughs> behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Uh -huh. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And so now at this point, at this point, like I said, we're in captivity. They're getting ready to come out. You know, Lord is letting Moses know what's about to take place, sisters and brothers. Because we're not going to really get off into, uh, you know, get off into the details of them getting delivered out and stuff like that. We just want to show that we were in bondage, you know, because we look at the Bible, we look at these, look at the scriptures and read these different stories, and for the most part, most, most of us don't realize that that was, that's us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's our bloodline. These are our forefathers that was in this captivity, sisters and brothers. But the Lord see it, and now he's getting ready to bring them out. That's why he said in verse 9, Now therefore, behold, the cry 
of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. And this is our, our first captivity as a people, sisters and brothers. You know, this is our first captivity. What I mean by that, because the Lord going to say, which we're going to read today in Deuteronomy 28, he's going to let us know that I'm going to send you back into Egypt. But he wasn't talking about this Egypt right here. He's talking about this time I'm going to send you to a worldwide Egypt. Because Egypt and Israel, you know, for us, Egypt is synonymous with, with bondage or captivity, sisters and brothers. So right now, hey, we're in a worldwide Egypt now. And the Lord going to deliver us out of this, same, just like he did last time. So it said, come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou may bring forth my people, the children of Israel from Egypt. Skip down to verse 16 to read that. Go and gather the elders of Israel together mm -hmm. and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, mm -hmm. I have surely visited you and seen that which is done, uh, done to you in Egypt. Uh -huh. What is it saying, verse 20? And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. Mm -hmm. And after that, he will let you go. Uh-huh, because what Moses did, he, had, he went and told the elders, went and gathered some elders and just repeated what the Lord told him. You know, and the end result of this, he going to end up bringing them out and delivering them from this captivity. That's why he said, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. But the crazy thing about this is, is that our forefathers witnessed what the Lord did, sisters and brothers. You know, the Lord came down or used Moses, you know, at first using different, different signs by where Aaron and Moses, different miracles and wonders and stuff like that. And then eventually the Lord himself got involved and severed Israel off with all the different plagues and destruction that was coming through Egypt. Hey, it got to a point it wasn't touching Israel no more. But the, the thing about this is, hey, it's going to happen just like this in the end of the world. There's something in the Bible called the Great Tribulation, sisters and brothers. And this Great Tribulation, another place in Jeremiah 30, called it Jacob's Trouble. So you're going to see three and a half years of, you know, the world going to turn on Israel, sisters and brothers. Three and a half years. You're going through a lot of hell, then eventually, guess what's going to happen? The Lord going to seal off his people, then he going to get involved. And he going to tear the world up, sisters and brothers. But it's just like it was in Egypt. That's why it's very important for you to read the, if you're going to read the Bible, look, I wouldn't suggest you just start off in the New Testament. You know, read the whole Bible, but look, you're going to have to have the Old Testament. Because for the most part, ain't nothing, you know, like he talked, like Solomon talking about, ain't nothing new under, uh, under the sun. You know, it's going to be a little bit different, but it's almost the, the situation is the same. It's just that now our situation, instead of us being in captivity in one particular area, now we're in captivity throughout the whole world. Lord, he scattered us throughout the whole world, but he's going to deliver us once again. But eventually, hey, when the Lord pour out one of the biggest signs in Egypt, he's going to kill the firstborn in the household. And that brings us to a particular, uh, you know, particular time frame in the year, which we call the Passover. Because when the Lord put that decree out that he was going to kill the firstborn in every household, well, what you had to do being in Egypt at the time, you would have to take a lamb and put it up on the 10th day and kill it on the 14th day that evening, right? And that blood, you would have to put it on your doorpost. And when that death angel came through Egypt, when he saw that blood on that doorpost, you know what he did? He passed over your house, sisters and brothers. That's where we get the Passover from. So every year, you know, in its season, not every Sunday, not every fourth Sunday of the month, hmm. every year in its season is usually around late March, early April sometimes, but every year around the same time, we observe Passover, don't we? And then from there, we go into the Lord's Holy Days, Feast of Eleven Bread, so on and so forth. But look, it's going to start way back here. But now, go over to uh, Exodus 12, because now you're getting ready to bring them out, sisters and brothers. And you can read that on your own. Like I said, we just want to kind of show that we were in captivity, which is why he had to bring us out of Egypt in the first place. And now he's getting ready to go and do that. Exodus 12. 
And we're going to pick this up at verse 35 because all the different things that we have, you know, all the different things, the holidays and stuff that the world is observing, that has absolutely nothing to do with us, sisters and brothers. What God has commanded us to observe, it's in the Bible. But we don't want that, though. We don't want that. You know why? Because a lot of us are just caught or stuck in tradition. But when you make up your mind to serve the Lord, you have to change that mentality and do what the Lord tells you to do. So Exodus 12 and 35, go and read that. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. Mm -hmm. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things that they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Uh-huh, because they're getting ready to come out now. They're getting ready to come out of the come out of this captivity, sisters and brothers. And we're going to see what the Lord is going to do as he brings them out. What, he, what title he going to put on them, sisters and brothers. But he said, look, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and, and the raiment. Guess what? That's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen again. All over again. You know, and the good thing about this, see, we reading about what happened back during that time. Some of us going to be alive to see it in action this time, sisters and brothers. Some of us going to actually see it. And if you, can, if you just pay attention to all the things that are happening around the world, if you just look at what's going on now, hey, it's, it's, it's coming fast, sisters and brothers. It's coming fast because our deliverance is near. But it's going to be the same where we're going to spoil the nations and stuff like that, you know, as we get ready to come out of this bondage that we're in in this time. But he said the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. What else to say? And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men mm -hmm. beside children. And, you know, if y'all know anything about Jacob, Jacob, when he went down into Egypt, it was only 70 souls. You know, so he come out with over 600,000. That's just that ain't including everybody. If you look at what it says, it says, uh, and the children of Israel uh, journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men mm -hmm. beside children, right? So, you know, Israel know how to populate, don't they? <laughs> That's why I think that movie, The Gremlins, was really about <laughs> us. <laughs> we don't die, we what? Multiply. We multiply. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, skip down to verse 4 and read. That what it say. <laughs> Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Uh-huh, because we was in that captivity. Because you have a lot of people, even today, they try, to, uh, they try to tie this particular bondage that we in now, they try to say that this is at 400 years. Look, sisters and brothers, first off, you know, we've been in captivity longer than 400 years. You know, it's been thousands of years now. But uh, this right here is not talking about that. Because you have to realize that, first and foremost, when Jacob went down into Egypt, Joseph was governor, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, so they had a time. We got we to gotta deal with that time that Joseph was in Egypt first as governor. Then Jacob came down, and they was living good. So we got to, we, we got to deal with that time right there. So for the most part, you got that 30 years of them just living good. And then afterwards, now they're going to captivity for 400 years, sisters and brothers. And that's going to make up your 430. The reason I say that, because the Lord told Abraham that we, they was going to be in uh, captivity until the iniquity of the Amorites mm -hmm. is fulfilled, you know, or done in a sense. So we're not living in the time of the Amorites. We're up under the times of who? The Gentiles. You know, some people call them the white man. Or the Europeans, that's the captivity we're up under right now. The captivity that Israel was up under when, uh, after the Lord told Abraham about they're going to be in captivity, they're going to come back in the fourth generation. Hey, that was, the, that was under Ham's seed. That's when Ham was in power. Ham ain't in power right now. The Gentiles in power. And we're going to be in captivity until the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled. You know? So you even have brothers come up saying that America, this is a 400-year captivity. Look, we ain't just in America, first off. We all over the place. Then on top of that, why they keep changing? I remember in 08, when I first came into the Word, 2012 was going to be 
you know, 400 years, 1611 Bible. You had brothers saying, you know, 2011, we coming out. Okay, we're going to move the goalposts because we ain't went nowhere, right? So we're going to move it to 2016. Ain't went nowhere. 2019, ain't went nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. Because that ain't what it's talking about, sisters and brothers. The Lord didn't give us the time on this particular captivity. What he gave us now is as far as uh, 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 dates and numbers and stuff like that, he didn't give us that. He gave Abraham 400 years, did he? Mm -hmm. As far as this right here is concerned, he just talked about in this time until the time of the Gentiles. Once their time is up, which we can see is clearly falling. But once that's done, once their rulership is over, then we're getting out of this captivity. But it's not talking about this particular time right now when we read this. So he said, look, now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Keep reading. What else does it say? And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, uh -huh. that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. Right. So, so this is this is something that we should be talking about in black history. You know, this is something that should be taught as far as curriculum is concerned to the kids in school. And it don't matter if black kids or white kids because when it came to us learning about American history and world history, it didn't matter that we was black, did it? Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't matter about us being taught the truth and also teaching other nations who we are. That's what we're doing, eh? We turn back to the bottom. We're letting the whole world know. You know, anybody can get salvation. It just so happened that the Lord people who he chose to preach the gospel to the world happen to be a black people. That shouldn't be a problem. It wasn't a problem when y'all grandmothers and my grandmama had Jesus on the wall and he was white. It wasn't a problem, was it? Mm -mm. You know, some of us walked in the house and looked at him. Like, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Florida Evans was. <laughs> we weren't going to take her Jesus off the wall. Micah say, but mama, mama, look at what it says in the Bible. He got hair like wood. She was like, uh-huh, not my Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so we dealt with that, and we ain't had no problem with that. So why people got a problem with teaching us the truth? Because you start putting the truth in people, hey, you know what that's going to do? That's going to highlight sin, sisters and brothers. You know, for the most part, the world follows us and all the ignorance we do, right? But once we turn back to God, you think the world ain't going to follow? Eventually, they're going to follow. So, hey, Satan, Satan don't want that to happen, so let's just keep it hid. But now they're getting ready to come out of Egypt, sisters and brothers. Like I say, doing Passover, we go more into that and also dealing with things, great tribulation, we can kind of tie it in with what's going to happen in Revelation because it's almost similar and stuff like that. When you get down to the seals and, you know, the seals and the vials of wrath and all that, it's, it's kind of similar. So we'll deal with that at another time. The point is, now we're looking at Israel coming out of Egypt and they're about to meet the Lord in the wilderness, sisters and brothers. So Exodus 19 we're going to pick this up at verse 1, because we're going to look at all of it, you know. In this black history, we're going to look at, and matter of fact, we ain't going to pull out no artifacts today. We're just going to look at the Bible, look at what the books say. But we're going to see how we went from priests, you know, to kings and the slaves, and then eventually we're going to be set free. But Exodus 19, go and pick this up at verse 1. Exodus 19 and verse 1, go and read it. What does it say? In the third month, when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Uh -huh. But they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai mm -hmm. and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mountain. Okay, so they're out of, Israel, I mean, they're out of Egypt now. The Lord got them in the wilderness. They're just moving around and stuff like that. That's why I said in the third month, when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai. What else to say? And had pitched in the wilderness, uh -huh. and there Israel camped before the mount. Go ahead. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings mm -hmm. and brought you unto myself. Now, just keep that in mind. That wasn't done for nothing. You know, like the Lord ain't just delivered them out of this situation, you know, and just let them go. Now you can go and do what you want to do. Now, the Lord brought Israel out of captivity, you know, and now, now he's going to put this covenant out here, and we're going to agree to this covenant, 
but we're going to have to change our way of life now. You know, all that stuff we was doing in Egypt, all that, you know, worshiping other gods and stuff like that. Look, we, we can't do that no more, sisters and brothers. So he giving a rundown and just letting them know, look, you've seen what I did now. You've seen what I did. He said, you've seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. You know, not necessarily flying them out on the wings of an eagle, but the Lord did send his angel to protect them, in other words, just like he's going to do in the end. Tell you that in Revelation uh, uh, 12. But he said, look, you've seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. What else to say? Now, therefore, uh -huh. if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Right, so we have to do something, right? Mm -hmm. It ain't like the Lord just deliver us and we can live any way we want to live. That's why he say, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and do what? Keep my covenant. And keep my covenant. See, the covenant didn't just come about in the New Testament. It's been around, but nowadays we try to make it seem like we under a totally different covenant where we don't got to keep the commandments no more. No, that's not the case, sisters and brothers. We under new we under new covenant, but it's the same principle. Like for example, we still got to keep the commandments. You still got to keep the Sabbath. Still can't eat anything you want to eat and pray over it. Now you can't do that. You still under the same covenant that was introduced back in the Old Testament. The only di well, the big difference is is the blood that was shed. See, back then the blood that was used to bring us into the covenant it was the blood of animals. But the new covenant or the new testament, it was shared by who? Jesus. By Jesus. You understand? So that's the new covenant. But we still got to keep the law. That's why he said in Hebrews 10, I'm going to write my laws in their heart and in their, in their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Let you know the law is still good. Why you got preachers telling you ain't got to keep the law no more? They said we're on the new covenant as if the new covenant allows us just to do anything. That ain't what the new covenant is re referring to. The new covenant, sisters and brothers, we just have... We have a different way to bring us into this covenant now. And it's by the blood of Jesus. But he's letting us know, look, I done delivered you. I done brought you out of your situation. You've seen it. Now you need to be obedient, right? Mm -hmm. He said, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then what's going to happen? You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Above some people. All people. Just a few. All people. He said, look, if you be obedient unto me, you're going to be a, procu a peculiar treasure Unto me above all people, sisters and brothers. What else to say? For all the earth is mine. Uh huh. Keep reading. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now, now this is how we got ourselves in trouble. Because if you're a priest, sisters and brothers, you know what that means? That means you're going to set the example. You know, when it comes to righteousness, when it comes to sin, when it comes to confusion, need and understanding, hey, the priest going to have answers on all of that. You want to know what law you're supposed to keep? Go talk to the priest. You don't want to know what God do like uh, or does like and what he doesn't like? Go talk to the priest. The priest going to guide you in the right way, keep you from going down the wrong path. But if the priest done went off, then guess what? The whole world going to go off, sisters and brothers. So this is why we're getting tore up like this. See, these are things we don't want to do. We want to be blessed and highly favored, not realizing, no, nah, we ain't blessed and highly favored. First off, he was talking to Mary when he said that. So that don't cover all of us. But at the same time, look, we got curses sitting on top of us, sisters and brothers. You know, I said before and I said again, you know, when Trump first got in office, one of the first things he said was the Mexicans need to go back home. Then. Didn't he say that? Yeah. You need to build a wall and keep them out. Well, how is it that you've been over all here all this time? Nobody ever, never, never came up with an effort to try to send us back home. Mexican, they get to go home. Why you can't go nowhere? You know why? Because you've been bought and sold. You ain't going nowhere. You are the investment. That's why. And, that, and the only time we're going to get out of this is when the Lord returns, sisters and brothers. That's when he's going to bring us out of this. But if you're not being obedient and doing what he say, look, that's what's going to happen. You should expect. You should expect destruction to come because we're not dealing with a normal man. We're dealing with God, sisters and brothers. That's why he said here, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. That means we're going to preach the gospel to the world, sisters and brothers. He said, you're going to be unto me a kingdom of priests. What does he say? And in holy nation. And a holy nation. Go ahead. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Move over to Amos. Amos 2. 
Amos 2. Not that we like to hound on who we are as a people, not, you know, not trying to make anybody else feel bad, because like I say, salvation is for the world, sisters and brothers. Salvation is for everybody. But you, you can't do away with the order, though. The Lord set Israel up to preach this gospel. So Amos, Amos 2, Amos 2, and the Lord going to speak through the mouth of Amos. And he's going to recall bringing us out of captivity and letting you know what he did for our sons. Amos 2 and verse 9. What does it say, brother? Go ahead. Yet destroyed I the Amorite before uh, them. Uh-huh, because that's what he did, because that's the land that we end up getting. We call it Canaan today. But he took out the Amorites, Hivites, Jebusites, so on and so forth, the names that we just mentioned over in, in Exodus. But he's just recalling it. He said, look, yet destroyed out the Amorites before them. What else? Whose height was like the height of the cedars. Uh-huh, go ahead. And he was, a strong, he was strong as the oak. Right, so no matter how big he was, no matter, no matter how strong the Amorites were, hey, the Lord fought our battles. That's just like now today. Look, like I tell y'all, we're in a situation, we can buy all the guns we want to. We still ain't got no power. We ain't got no power, sisters and brothers. You know who our power is? And, and when I say power as far as, I mean physically. You know, we can buy guns, we can stock up on all that stuff. But look, this ain't this this got something to do with, you know, the big dogs in a sense. You know, the kings of the world. We 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 the, we the, we the peasants. We the slaves, sisters and brothers. So you know who gotta come get us out of this? The Lord gotta come get us out of this. That's why he's the one that took down the Amorites back then. It's saying that, right? It said, yet destroyed I the Amorites before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars. We ain't have to fight no battles. God fought it. He said, he was strong as the oaks, yet I destroyed his fruit from above. What else? And his roots from beneath. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt mm -hmm. and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. That's right, because eventually, hey, we got out the wilderness, though. We was in there for 40 years, you know, because of the, because of the fear that our forefathers had when they saw those giants when they went to spy out the land, sisters and brothers. Took them 40 days to spot the land. They came back with a bad report and put fear in all the people. The Lord was like, okay, well, we're going to add a year to every day that you was over there. So you spied out the land, took you 40 days to spot out to come back with this report, you know, talking about they're going to kill our kids and our wives and stuff like that. Okay, that's going to happen, but y'all finna walk in this wilderness for 40 years. They was right outside of Israel. Kept them in the wilderness for 40 years, sisters and brothers. And this is what he's talking about here. He said, look, also I brought you up in the wilderness, I'm sorry. He said, also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. What else? And I raised up of your sons for profit. He said, he did what now? And I raised up of, raised up of your sons for profit. Uh-huh, because that's who it started with. It started with Israel, sisters and brothers. He said, and I raised up, for your, uh, uh, raised up of your sons for prophets. What else? And of your young men for Nazareth. Uh-huh. Is it not even thus? Oh, you children of Israel, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. That's right, because that's who the Lord gave it to. He gave it to, brought us out of that captivity. Then he raised us up to be priests and prophets and Nazarites and stuff like that. He gave it to Israel, sisters and brothers. That's why if you look around the world today, somebody else, we call the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they the one so-called in our position. They're doing it wrong. But even with them trying to, Take our position. You can clearly see that the Lord done blinded them. You know, they go to school, spend all this money on, on theology, spend all these years on higher education as far as the Bible is concerned, and somehow or another they still can't figure out the Bible. Because hmm. the Lord got them blind, sisters, because it, it didn't, just because we're in this condition, it don't mean that the Lord going to take the job and give it to somebody else. He just going to beat you until you get on the job. That's what they're going to do, right? That's why, that's why we don't promote so much of giving a job off to somebody else to do it. It's not that we don't want other people to help and preach the gospel. But look, you have to understand, like, the Lord is beating us because we haven't been doing our job. You know, we've been doing all, serving all these other guys for all these years. Now he's waking us up, and we're trying to turn back and do what we're supposed to have been doing in the first place. So the Lord can have some mercy on us, sisters and brothers. 
But he said, look, and I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men, Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? Go to Psalms. Psalms 147. Psalms 147. Because like I said, he didn't change the job. He didn't give it to nobody else. It's still our responsibility, which is why we just come up regular people. No education as far as the Bible is concerned. We didn't go to school. We didn't go to theology school and nothing like that. But the Lord just preserved his word for his people. So when they wake up, hey, they get right back on the job. Get right back on the job. I remember some years ago, a lady came to, our, came to our class when we was in the hotel. And she said, I ain't never heard nothing like this. You need to go to theology school. I was like, <laughs> like whoever brought her, don't bring her back no more. But no, I, I didn't say that. I wanted to. But the point is, like, why would I go to theology school when the Lord is pouring out his spirit on them? That don't make sense. That don't make sense. We don't have to do that. All you have to do is be obedient, right, and do what he say. That's how he's going to give you that word, by fearing God and keeping his commandments. Once you do that, hey, now the Lord start opening things up. But Psalms 147, Psalms 147, and pick this up at verse, uh, at verse 12. She thought that was a compliment. That was actually an insult, to be honest with you. That's not a compliment telling me, oh, you should go to theology school. What? That, that ain't no compliment. Not to me. It may be to some people, but not to us. To us, we like, nah, the Lord gave us the word. You can't get no better than that. That's just like with Peter them. You know, when they seen Peter them, when they got out of the jail, they saw Peter them and looked at their outward appearance. But when they opened their mouth, you know what they said? They knew they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't, I don't really be tripping too much on attire as far, I mean, long as you're decent. But when I don't really trip on suits and ties and all that type of stuff because, hey, at the end of the day, it's about what you're learning. Because there's going to be a lot of suits and ties in the lake of fire. Hmm. Just understand that. <laughs> Psalm 147, pick it up at verse 12. What does it say, brother? Praise the Lord of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. Praise thy God of Zion. Uh-huh. For he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. Uh-huh. He has blessed thy children within thee. Right. And, hey, we experienced that at one time. And, Lord willing, in the future, we're going to see this again. It ain't going to always be bad. He's going to recover us, take us back home, sisters and brothers. And you talk about another place, it's going to be boys and girls playing in the streets. But he said, look, praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion, for he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. What else he say? He maketh peace in thy borders. Uh -huh. We don't experience that now, though, do we? Mm -mm. He said, look, he make peace in thy borders. As a matter of fact, like I say, you know, we did see some of this earlier. But in the future, hey, we're going to see this all over again. Matter of fact, we ain't even at our border right now, though. America is not your border. Our border is Israel, sisters and brothers. We got carted off, and we in somebody else's border. Just like somebody over there today is in our border, Esau. That's not his border. Somebody put him there. But he say, look, he make peace in our borders and fill thee with the finest of the wheat. What else he say? He sent forth his commandment upon uh, earth. Uh-huh. We talking about all that God does, right? Mm -hmm. He say, look, he sent forth his commandment upon earth. What else? His, his word runneth very swiftly. Uh-huh, keep reading. He giveth snow like wool. Mm -hmm. He scattereth the hoarfrost to, uh, for, like ashes. Right, but God is the one that's behind that, ain't he? Mm -hmm. God is the one that sent all the snow and stuff. That's why I say, look, he sent forth his commandment upon earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scattered the hoarfrost like ashes. What else? He cast his forces ice like morsels. Uh-huh, the Lord is behind that. When the time come and get cold outside, look, the Lord is... A, Lord is behind all of that, cold and heat. God is behind it all. What else to say? Who can stand before his cold? Nobody. That's why I say all the time. You have people, you know, things don't really get hot until the summertime, don't it? Mm -hmm. You know, even some of your gang bangers, some of your toughest dudes, man, don't want to come outside when it's cold. Like the fight on the phone. You look, it's cold outside. <laughs> Wait till it get hot. <laughs> he said, who can stand before it? Nobody can. Mm -mm. He said, who can stand before his cold? Y'all know, don't nobody want to be outside in the wintertime. <laughs> who can stand before his cold? What else to say? He sent out his word and melted them. Uh-huh, keep reading. He causes his wind to blow mm -hmm. and the waters flow. That's right, go ahead. But notice all that he does, right? You can see that it's obvious. You know the Lord is behind that. Hey, he even caused it to melt, don't he? Mm -hmm. The Lord is behind it. Everybody can agree to that. But what else does he do? What does it say? He showed his word unto Jacob. Oh, look at that, though. In addition to all that, that we just read, 
pay attention. He said he also show his word to Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. What else to say? His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel or Jacob's seed. It don't change. Still his people who he gave his word to coming out of ex Exodus that we read about, set them up as king kings and priests. Hey, down the line, still the same thing. Mm -hmm. Jacob's seed, Jacob got his name changed to Israel. So that's what we're talking about. Twelve tribes, in other words. He showed his word unto Jacob. What else? His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh-huh. Keep reading. He has not dealt so with any nation. Right. So I told you, you know, we're not just making this up, not trying to stop anybody from getting the word. But who did the Lord give, give it to, sisters and brothers? Israel. He gave it to Israel. Mm -hmm. Like this come out your Bible. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. This is why it's so important as a, as a, a, a nation of priests, we should be setting an example to the world because the Lord gave it to us. If he didn't give it to nobody else, then you should expect them to act a fool. You should expect nations to carry on like they do, but not the priest, though. Not the priest. The priest is the one that's supposed to set the example. So if we're not setting an example, if we're not showing them how to serve God the right way, then, hey, everybody else is going to be off because the Lord only gave it to Israel. Read it again. What does it say? He has not dealt so with any I said nation. read it again, brother. Oh. Verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Uh-huh. So it say, look, he showeth his word unto Jacob. Go ahead. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh-huh. Now go ahead. What does it say? He has not dealt so with any nation. But look at that, though. He has not dealt so with any nation. In other words, he ain't given it to nobody else. But it just makes sense why we want to stay in the New Testament because we don't want to see this type of stuff, you know. He never changed the church over like they say on Pentecost. The Lord, you know, we under new dispensation. He gave it over to the Gentiles. You can't read that in Acts 2, sisters and brothers. In Acts 2, it was Israelites that came up to keep the feast of Pentecost. That's a feast, one of the uh, three feasts we are commanded to be at. You know, all your males shall appear. Feast of weeks, unleavened bread, and what's the other one? Tabernacles. So in Acts 2, that was Israel that was up there. He never gave it over to anybody else. So he says here, look, 19, he shows word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Go ahead. He has not dealt so with any nation. Uh-huh. And as for his judgments, mm -hmm. they have not known them. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Right, but nobody else knows it, sisters and brothers. Nobody else. And this is really what we need to be showing our kids. You know, when you put the truth out there and show them and let them know they, you know, like some of y'all remember it, you know, uh, Jesse Jackson had two famous slogans, keep hope alive, <laughs> and I am somebody. And I used to hear those, and I just never knew who I was. You know, I am somebody. Who are you? We didn't know who we was. We just knew we somebody. Everybody somebody. <laughs> but hey, even the leaders back then just left us hanging, didn't they? I am somebody. But I didn't know. But now we know, right? You can teach these, the next generation, they know who they are. And look, they're going to move about a whole lot differently, sisters and brothers. If you beating, beating somebody down, making them feel worthless, hey, he ain't gonna have no, he ain't gonna have no problem taking his own brother out because he don't see nothing when he see his brother. That's like one brother said online one time, you know, he said the reason why Negroes won't kill a white man because they think he's Jesus. Hmm. You know, and uh, you don't see black people, you know, really jumping on white people like they do their own self, not promoting violence or nothing. But the point is, look, when you look at yourself as not being anything, you ain't going to really care about your brother life, sisters and brothers. You're going to look at somebody else as being more important than you. But that's the thing. We turn it back to God, and then we can also implement these laws, statutes, and judgments that the Lord left for us as a people. Hey, that's going to change your whole outlook. That's going to change your whole outlook. That's why when you have issues and stuff like that inside the church, you need to deal with it like the Bible say deal with it. Shouldn't be working around church with attitudes, hating each other. You know, this is supposed to be like our little heaven, sisters and brothers. So you think you're going to be in heaven mad at your brother? You think Jesus is going to allow that? Oh, Lord, I'm mad at Brother Nate. Well, you go to hell then. Get on up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to think. I mean, we gonna, Jesus is going to be here. So you got to practice these now. 
Because God has given us a way of life, sisters and brothers. So all we have to do is just pick up what the Lord showed us, get back to it, and, you know, show the next generation. And things will change, sisters and brothers. Move over to Romans 9. Romans 9. Romans 9, because this is who the Lord gave it to, sisters and brothers. And it's not that we don't want to, uh, we just don't want to ignore it. It's in the Bible. We have to address it. You know, sometimes you talk about that. People, people be a first time hearing something like this. You know, the, the, the name tag that's on us as Hebrews, people want to just stamp on their black Hebrews. So you hear something like that, it's like we just talk about race all the time. You know, first off, look, the Hebrews have always been black. Mm -hmm. And they're going to yeah. always be black. So you got to put that stamp on us because here it is now, we waking up, turning back to God. And you say, oh, there's some black Hebrew Israelites. You know, they matter of fact, they even have an acronym. It's BHI. But whether you know it or not, like we saw in Revelation 2, hey, it's somebody else calling themselves Jews and I'm not. Even Jesus himself, sisters and brothers, is a black man. He tell you that himself in Songs of Solomon. He say, I'm black but comely. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem. That wasn't Solomon talking. That's Jesus talking through the mouth of Solomon. Yes, sir. And he let you know, he say, I'm black but comely. Oh, you daughters of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Don't look on me because the sun have looked on me. Romans 9, pick this up at verse 1. It's in the Bible, though, and we have to deal with it. Romans 9 and verse 1, what does it say? I say the truth in Christ. Huh? I lie not. Go ahead. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Now, this Paul talking, right? He said, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For what? For I, I, wish I, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ uh -huh. for my brethren. My kinsmen according to the flesh. Now, look at this now, because, you know, we like to, we like to uh, be so spiritual, right? Sometimes we ain't no earthly good. But in this case, here, we want to be so spiritual, you know, because people like to say, well, it don't matter. You know, it's all about the spirit now. Well, okay. Well, look at what Paul is saying, right? Pay attention to what he's saying. He said, look, for I wish, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, right? Mm -hmm. Not talking about spiritual brothers. He said, look, from Christ for my brother, my kinsman, what? According to the flesh. According to the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Who are what? Israelites. So you mean Israelites and, and Paul, they, they connected? Mm -hmm. That's his kinfolk? He said, look, who are Israelites? Go ahead and read. What else to say? To whom pertaineth the adoption. So now talking about these Israelites, guess what belongs to them? I ain't talking about in the spirit either. We talking about... Paul's family according to the flesh, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. To the flesh. So he said, who are Israelites, to whom pertain what? The adoption. The adoption. This is why the Lord told Moses to tell Pharaoh, if you don't let my firstborn go, then I'm going to kill your firstborn. But the Lord didn't lay down with a woman and have us as a nation of people, did he? No, he just changed our father's name, Jacob, changes to Israel, and that's the adoption right there. Mm -hmm. And then everything, the 12 tribes that come out of Israel, hey, we automatically fall in line with that. So we the ones that were adopted first. That's why he called us the firstborn, which is the indicator of more coming later, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. That's why he called the firstborn. So that means you're going to have some second ones coming afterwards, right? But he said, look, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption? What else? And the glory. Uh huh. Keep reading. And the covenants. Mm -hmm. And the giving of the law. Right. So he say, and the covenants. He say, uh, uh, the glory. So we gonna represent the Lord. He say, the covenants, and the giving of the law. Cause the covenant, when you think about it, it was made with our forefather, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Started with Abraham. It was passed down to Isaac, passed down to Jacob. And we supposed to pick it up. But we saw in Exodus 19. If you read a little further, in the Exodus 24, you're going to see that he came into a covenant with Israel. Not saying that other nations can't be a part of the covenant, but 
as far as the majority of who the Lord was dealing with when he brought them out of Egypt, that was the Israelite sisters and brothers. You had a mixed multitude among them, you know, but they just fell in line with what was going on with us. Just like now today, you want to get salvation. Look, you're going to have to come up under the commonwealth of Israel. It's not going to change. Can't make up your own type of way. Look, the Bible tells you in Ephesians 4, it's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. You're going to have to come up under the commonwealth of Israel. If we got to keep the Sabbath, guess what? You got to keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. If I can't eat pork, you can't eat pork. See, we say we, you know, we live by the laws according to the Bible. You know, in this case here, talking about Leviticus 11. Lord gave us a dietary law, right? But at the same time, you have others saying you can eat anything, just pray over it. So which one is it? Can we eat anything, just pray over it, or do we have to abide, abide by the law? And we have to abide by the law. So therefore, hey, the world going to have to do the same thing because he gave it to Israel. Nobody else, sisters and brothers. So he said, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants? And what else? And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. Because that's what a priest do. That's what a priest going to do. He going to set an example, but he also going to show you where you're wrong at by putting that law out there. That's why the Lord was so mad with Israel. Hey, they didn't, they, you know, you go back and read that Amos on your own. You see, they gave, they gave the Nazarites, you know, the sons who's raised up a prophets. That next verse, if we would have kept reading, you would see that they had gave them, the, uh, gave wine to them. Next thing you know, they just perverted judgment. But that's what the priest supposed to do, supposed to guide the people in the right way, sisters and brothers. So he said, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law? What else to say? And the service of God. And the service of God. What else? And the promises. And the promises. So one of the services of God is people getting baptized in Sunday churches. You just got wet because you're going to have to do it all over again. You know why? Because guess who the Lord gave the service to? Hmm. He gave it to Israel, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing that you got to do it over again. They had to do it over again in Acts 19. You know, Paul asked them, you know, about being baptized. They say we was baptized under John's baptism. We ain't heard about the Holy Ghost. So when they found out that, when Paul showed them what they had to do, they got baptized again in the name of Jesus, sisters and brothers. So it ain't like it's strange, you know, but if you've been baptized in the Sunday church, look, you, you're doing it according to how the world is doing things, not according to the Bible, because the Lord didn't give it to the other nation. He gave it to Israel. It's our job to do that. Read it again. What does it say? Who are Israelites, uh -huh. to whom pertaineth the adoption, uh -huh. Keep reading. and the glory, mm -hmm. and the covenant, Go ahead. and the giving of the law. Right, so it belonged to Israel, right? Now, I'm not making anything up. I, we're not trying to make our scenes, uh, ourselves seem better than anybody. we just reading what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. This is what the Bible is saying, sisters and brothers. Because you know a lot of people walk around with, uh, with it, don't they? Hmm. But few ever read the Bible. You know, because a lot of times when we read the Bible, we have a, a train, you know, our minds have been trained on how to study. Like if you go into a church where it's all about prosperity, when you go home to study, you're going to read scriptures on prosperity. You know, if you trained on going, uh, uh, go to church and they talk about you going to heaven, it's going to be a rapture. When you go home to study, you know what you're going to study? You're going to study on things about going up to heaven. You're going to think Elijah went to heaven. That ain't the case, but you got your mind trained a certain way. So for the most part, you're not going to even see Romans 9. And if you look at Romans 9 and bring it to the preacher, he's going to make it seem like it's talking about something completely different. So he said, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, covenants, and the giving of the law, service of God, and the promises, right? Mm -hmm. All that belong to Israel. But now let's move over to uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Because we were priests, sisters and brothers, and eventually, you know, the Lord going to bring us back as a nation. But also, we were kings. And ultimately, ultimately, we had our king, sisters and brothers. Our king is Jesus. Yes, sir. That's one thing we 
you know, we always had Jesus as our king, and we gonna all, that's going to always be our king. That's why if you look at the situation in the world today, most leaders that are set up, that come up and rule in the world, it's not for us. You know, if you, if you pay attention to like G8 summit, G20 summits and stuff like that, they have representatives from all the countries around the world. You have nobody that represents you, sisters and brothers. Nobody represents us. Because our king is Jesus. But we look at other nations and like to be like other nations. This is what happened with our forefathers, you know, back during this time in 1 Samuel. We wanted a king. We wanted a king just like everybody else, sisters and brothers. You know, we didn't, we didn't want Jesus or God to be our king. And I say Jesus because most people don't understand that Jesus was the one that was around in the Old Testament. That's the one that I was dealing with Moses. That's the one that I was actually speaking through the mouth of the prophet. It was Jesus himself. He came in the flesh laid on, but nobody never talked to the Father. And he told you that. He'll tell you that in the New Testament. First Samuel 8. I'm sorry. Did I say 15? You said 8. I said 8? Okay. First Samuel 8. And let's pick this up at verse uh, 3. All right. What does it say? And his sons walked not in his ways. But turned aside after after Lucre. Uh huh. Because at this point now, Samuel getting old. Samuel getting old. His and during this time, you got a period where Israel don't really have a leader like that, like a Moses or a Joshua. So it's like a big gap. And mainly, what's going on here? We got judges. So now Samuel getting old. His sons done kind of got persuaded with money and filthy lucre and stuff like that. So Israel going to try to find a way to justify them wanting a king. Mm -hmm. So they're going to use that. What does it say? Read through again. And his sons walked not in his ways, uh -huh. but turned aside after lucre and took bribes mm -hmm. and perverted judgment. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel and to Ramon and said unto him, Behold, thou art old. And thy sons walk not in thy ways. Mm -hmm. Now make us a king to judge us like all nations. Right, because that's what they wanted in the first place. He said, he said unto them, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. I mean, we don't need a king for that, do we? Mm -mm. Let's just go get some other guys that's going to be good judges. But you see what the issue is, right? See, we're looking, at, we're looking at other nations and stuff wanting to be like them. And they said it, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They said, look, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Mm -hmm. Well, we got Jesus. You know, we had our king. It was, our king is the one that went in there and took down Pharaoh. You know, at that time, most powerful, you know, empire running the world at that time, you had our king come through there and destroy him. But that wasn't good enough for us. So we want a king just like the nations. That's why they said, now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. What else to say? But the thing displeased Samuel uh -huh. when they said, give us a king to judge us. Go ahead. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of thy people and all that they say unto thee. Mm -hmm. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. So you, you see what the problem is? You know, and even though, even though, uh, you know, Samuel wasn't pleased with that, the Lord let him know, it ain't really you that they, they tripping on. It's me. Mm -hmm. They have rejected me from being king. That's why I said, and the Lord said unto Samuel, the Lord said unto, uh, unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. And that's really what the issue is. We didn't want Jesus ruling over us, sisters and brothers. You know, we want a, we want a man to rule up so, over us so we can get away with our dirt. Hmm. But the Lord going to do that, and now Samuel is getting ready to, you know, he going to bring uh, uh, up Saul, our first king, and we're going to look at it briefly. Go to 15. Going to bring Saul up as a king. Y'all read that on your own. But Samuel, you're going to drop the ball. The Lord going to remember what the Amalekites did, you know,
previously, the Lord going to remember that, and he going to put out a commandment on what Saul needs to do to the Amalekites. So 1 Samuel 15, go and pick it up at verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, mm -hmm. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, uh -huh. over Israel. Now therefore hearken, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord of hosts. So now Saul is king. Mm -hmm. And we're just looking at that a little bit. You know, like I said, we ain't going to really get off in too much. But just showing how we're going for priests. Now we, now we are kings now. Saul is now a king. But he's going to mess up. But he said, look, Samuel also uh, uh, said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. What else to say? Thus said the Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. I remember that which, that which Amalekite did to Israel, mm -hmm. how they laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Uh-huh. Now go and smite Amalekite. Amalek. Amalek, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. and utterly destroy all that that they have, and spare them not. Okay, now, Saul is king, right? Mm -hmm. But Samuel letting them know, the Lord didn't forget what Amalek did. So, here's an opportunity. Go ahead and kill him. Take, it, take everything out. Don't save nothing. That's why I say go and smite Amalek and utterly, utterly destroy all that they have. What else? And spare them not. Uh-huh. But slay both man and woman, mm -hmm. infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. The Lord don't play you, do he, y'all? Mm -mm. He said kill everybody. King, infant, suckling, man and woman, right? Yep. Don't say nothing. Skip down to verse 7 and read that. Go ahead. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, uh -huh. that is over against Egypt. Uh -huh. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Okay, so what's the problem here? He said kill everybody, didn't he? Mm hmm But we see what he did now. He said he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But that ain't what the Lord told him to do. He said kill everybody. He didn't say, mm -hmm. ain't for let leave nobody alive. Verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag. Mm hmm and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and of the lambs, mm -hmm. and all that was good, and would not utter, utterly destroy them. Mm. But everything that was vile and refused, they that destroyed utterly. Now they got a, you know, Saul going, Saul in, in our eyes, it may be good reason, you know, it may be, the, the reason may be good, because he going to tell you, he, you know, he, he want to save these animals and stuff. To sacrifice it to the Lord. So you think as a man, you know, that, that was nice. You know, that, that, man, I think the Lord going to be pleased with that. But what did the Lord say? He said, kill everything, didn't he? Yes, sir. He said, kill everything. Go ahead and read. What else to say? Ten. Mm -hmm. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, but he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. Mm -hmm. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. Uh huh. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and has gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. Uh huh. But Samuel about to go find him. But now, you know, because of this, the Lord going, we're going to have another king come up, sisters and brothers. But this is Israel's first king, Saul. And Saul don't drop the ball. That's why it says here, repent me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments, right? Mm -hmm. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So now Samuel about to come to him because the Lord about to let him know he need to go, you know, he need to go holler at Saul. Go ahead and read. What is Sam 13? And Samuel came to Saul, mm -hmm. and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now, we know that ain't true. Mm -mm. But Saul thinks he's doing something good, though. And then we saw that it said in verse, uh, in verse 8, it says, And he took Agag, the king of the Am Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. But Saul and the people spared Agag, right? Mm -hmm. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen. 
So now let's see how Saul going to flip this around. So when Samuel came to Saul, verse 13, and Saul said to him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. What is it saying, 14? And Samuel said, uh -huh. What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears? Uh, so wait a minute. How you, how you killed everything, but I hear, these, I hear these animals in the background making all this noise. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, Samuel said, What mean then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears? What else? And the lowing of the oxen, which I hear. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. Oh, now he's going he to blame it on somebody else, ain't he? Mm -hmm. But I thought he was the king. Hmm. How you going to put it on them? But you the king, though. And you got the message. Saul told, uh, Samuel told him what the Lord said. Don't spare nothing. So it says here, Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For what? Well, the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Mm-hmm. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Right. But like I said, you know, being a man, you say, well, that, you know, that, that seems wholesome. You know, that seems like, you know, that, that deed is really good. But what did the Lord say? He said, kill everything, didn't he? Mm -hmm. That's why it talks about, uh, you know, every man don't live by bread alone, but by, by what? That come out of my Lord, right? So you're supposed to do everything you say. You know, now... That's just like with Adam. You didn't see Adam break the Sabbath or nothing, did you? You know, because we talk about commandments. He didn't, you didn't see Adam, uh, you know, eat nothing unclean, break a dietary law or nothing, did he? But what did he do? He disobeyed God, right? The Lord said, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's in the midst of the garden, right? So at that point, you got a commandment. Now, when you break that commandment, guess what it is? It's sin. So now, you done got Saul, think he doing something good, think he pleasing God, but that's why he said he broke the commandment. In verse 10, he said it. He said, then the, came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, verse 11, it repent me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and have not performed what? My commandments. My commandments. You see? So the Lord tell you to do something, do it. Stop. Look, you ain't got to try to be special. Just do what he say. That's just like keeping the Sabbath. He tell you to keep the Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. Don't try to make no excuse. Keep the Sabbath. Don't try to justify, oh, well, he understand my situation. I'm a slave. I'm a captivity. I can go to work. Where that's at? <laughs> Where is that in the book? <laughs> Stop following man. You better do what the book say because you're going to have to answer for yourself. So he said in 14, and Samuel said, what mean then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? What is Sam 15? And Saul said, uh -huh. they have brought them from the Amalekites. Uh -huh. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Go ahead. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Uh-huh, but we see he broke that commandment, but he put it on the people. Wasn't obedient like the Lord said, so Samuel going to deal with it. Keep reading. What else to say? Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, say on. And Samuel said, when thou was little in, th in thine own sight, wast thou not made thee head of the tribes of Israel? Uh -huh. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? Right, because keep in mind now, we're looking at these kings coming to play. And because of this right here, and, and uh, you know, something else Samuel did that the Lord wasn't pleased with, you know, he getting ready to, you know, he about to lose his position of being king over Israel. So he said, look, and Samuel said, when thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. What else to say? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Uh-huh, go ahead. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Uh-huh. And Saul said unto Samuel, yea. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Right, so really what he's saying in verse 19, he's asking him. You know, it's, it's like in a question form. Like, why you did that? That's, mm -hmm. that's really what he's saying. That's why he said, wherefore, then did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did even the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it may seem good. It may seem like a wholesome, you know, you know, the action seems okay. Like, you know, look at it like, man, that, man, I know the Lord going to be proud of that. The Lord wasn't proud of that. He 
proud of, about you being obedient. That make him happy. So he said, wherefore then, then did thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil and did even the sight of the Lord? What else to say? And Saul said unto Samuel, mm -hmm. yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of, the, of, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Right, so you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't kill the king. Go ahead, what else? But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, mm -hmm. the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Go ahead. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Right, but did the Lord say that? The Lord yes, didn't tell him to do that, though, did he? He said, kill everything. And then once again, he's blaming the people. That's what I don't get. How are you going to be the king? <laughs> and you, know, you let them get away with it. Mm -hmm. What 22 say? And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices mm -hmm. as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice mm -hmm. and to hearken than the fat of rams. Yeah, I used to hear this all the time. I remember I was, you know, when I was a kid, I was about to get a whooping. My daddy <laughs> would say that to me. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. I never understood, but they would say that loosely. But this is what the Lord is, this is what the Bible is talking about, right? Mm -hmm. He said, look, and Samuel said, have the Lord as uh, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, what's more important? They don't care about your sacrifice and your offering, you know, if it's going to go against you telling uh, him telling you, if it's going to go against what he told you to do, in other words. And that's what happened. Hey, that went against what the Lord told Samuel to do. So that ain't pleasing to God in this case right here, sisters and brothers. It's a time for everything. And that right there wasn't a the time to be offering up no animals. He said, behold, to obey is better, uh, better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. What else to say? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Right, so you might as well go and be wicked if you're going to be rebellious, right? And you may look at this and may, it, it may seem like, well, this is uh, uh, Saul's situation. What he did was wrong, and this don't pertain to nobody else. Look, if you being disobedient to God, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. I don't care if you try to make it seem like it's a small issue or not. Look, being disobedient, you fall right in this category. He said, look, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, right? Mm -hmm. What else to say? Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Uh -huh. You might be worshiping other God, then that's the case. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. What else? Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, uh -huh. he hath also rejected thee from being king. Right, but that's our first king. And because Israel wanted to be like all the nations around them, hey, they wanted a king, right? Mm -hmm. Lord set him up. Saul done dropped the ball. Now the Lord is about to bring in another king, which we know as David. So let's go into... 1 Samuel 16, move over to the next chapter, because that's what this is all about. Like I said, we do have a history, and some of it was bad, some of, uh, some of it was good, but our history don't just start here, coming off the ship. That's the point. Our history is in the Bible, and these people that we're reading about, this is a part of our bloodline, sisters and brothers. So 16, pick this up at, uh, at verse 1. What does it say? And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn for Saul, uh -huh. seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Mm -hmm. Fill thine horn, horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethl Bethlehemite. Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Uh -huh. So in other words, get over it. You know, ain't no sense you, you know, spilling, going crazy over this. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to set up another king. But let's look at it. What is saying verse 4? 4. Uh -huh. And Samuel did that which, spake, which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Cometh thou peaceably? Uh-huh, because, you know, that's, one, that's another thing we think about the Lord's servant. You know, we look at them like they all soft and stuff like that. You know, Saul didn't kill that king. You know who did? Samuel did. The Lord told Saul to kill, every, kill every, everybody, everything. Saul didn't do it. When Samuel got there and spoke to Saul about it, you know, he heard the bleeding of the sheep and the animals in his ears and stuff like that, and he found out that Agag was alive. He went over there and killed Agag himself. Mm -hmm. So Samuel wasn't no pushover, sister, just like Paul wasn't. 
you know, all these different TV shows they got out, they had these little white men, you know. I, 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 look, the characters are off anyway because they're all black. <laughs> <laughs> but they definitely weren't soft. And they weren't soft at all, sisters and brothers. Samuel was uh, one none to be played with, and just look at how they addressing him. They say, you coming in peace, man. <laughs> well, you got an issue with somebody. Mm-hmm. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled, trembled at his coming and said, comest thou peaceably. What else to say? Go and read. And he said, peaceably. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm coming peaceably. <laughs> I ain't going to mess with nobody. Go ahead. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse, his sons, and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. Right, so he had to make it seem like he was going to sacrifice in order to be able to do this while Saul is still king. Because Samuel asked the Lord, like, how am I going to do this? You know, Saul going to mess around and kill me for doing something like this. Well, the Lord said, hey, go act like you're about to go sacrifice. So that's what he's doing. He act like he's going to do a sacrifice. So he said, uh... Verse 5, I'm going to read it again. He said, he said, peacefully, I'm coming to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Now, Jesse is the father of David, sisters mm-hmm. and brothers. Because now we're moving down the line to the next king coming into the picture. Saul is, is, is for the most part, already done. Because he done made the Lord upset. And it was several times. But go ahead and read. What else to say? And it came to pass when they were come uh-huh. that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointing is before him. Mm-hmm. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance uh-huh. or on the height of his stature, mm-hmm. because I have refused him. For the mm-hmm. Lord seeth not as man seeth. Uh-huh. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. But look at that, though, you know, because you, you may look at somebody and think that's who the Lord going to use to do something. But the Lord don't think like we think, sisters and brothers. You know, the Lord look at the heart. So he thought Eliab was going to be the one, one of Jesse's son, you know, was thinking maybe because his stature, you know, that that's going to be the next king in line. But the Lord letting them know, no, nah, that's not him. That's why he said it came to pass when they would come that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointing is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, what? Go ahead. Look not on his countenance uh-huh. or on the height of his stature, mm-hmm. because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Uh-huh. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Right, but that's what the Lord look at, right? He look mm-hmm. at the heart. I ain't really paying attention to the outward appearance. Go ahead and read. What else? Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Mm-hmm. Then Jesse made Shamath to pass by. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Uh huh. Again. Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen thee. Right, so he got all his sons coming up, don't he? Mm-hmm. And none of them are fitting the bill. Somebody missing. What is saying, verse 11? And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? Mm-hmm. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. Mm-hmm. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Right, now we're talking about somebody, you know, his position don't seem that he, you know, he keeps sheep. He keeps sheep, so he, you know, in our eyes, look, he got a small position. He ain't nobody. But that's who the Lord gonna choose. Though. Go ahead and read. What else to say? And he sent and brought him in. Mm-hmm. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For uh-huh. well, this is he. Go ahead. Then Samuel took the horn of oil. And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Uh-huh. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. That's right. So at this point now, you got David getting ready to come up to be king. And most people know about King David, sisters and brothers. You know, great king in Jerusalem and over Israel. Matter of fact, he's so great a king that he's going to come back in the resurrection. He's going to be king over Israel again. Yes, sir tell you that in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord is going to be the king over the whole world. But it was a great king that even Jesus coming out of the lineage of David is going to sit on the throne of David. Mm-hmm. 
So we know about that. We talk about King David and stuff, but we never identify that he's a part of our bloodline. Like, that's our family, sisters and brothers. Like, this is what you got to teach these kids. This is what you got to teach the young men and stuff to show them who they really are according to the Bible. We're not thugs. We ain't porch monkeys. You know, because we ain't niggas. I know we say that and stuff. You know, we, you know, it's a term. What's up, my nigga? Term of endearment. I love you, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we the Hebrews, we the Israelites according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we got a rich history, sisters and brothers. Hmm. King David, that's in our family. That's in our family. But you're not telling the kids that. You're not teaching us this. We ain't going to care about nothing. Because we we've been taught, for the most part, that we are nothing. Whether you know it or not, there is something in the Constitution that calls us three-fifths of a man. That means the beast has more you know, power over us as men, over black men, sisters and brothers. So the world don't even look at us as anything. But God does, though. God does. But David is a part of our family at this point. Now he's going to get anointed. Because eventually what the Lord doing, he's taking that spirit off of Saul. And the evil spirit is going to come upon Saul. And God's spirit is going to come on David. Move over to uh, 1 Kings. Well, read 14. Well, I just said it, but you can read it, though. Okay. Go ahead. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Uh-huh. But now go to uh, 1 Kings. 1 Kings, just like a slight history lesson. 1 Kings chapter 2. And let's pick this up at verse 10. 1 Kings 2 and verse 10. What does it say? So David slept with his father mm -hmm. and was buried in the city of David. Okay, because like I say, we just... Just breezing through it, not really getting off into it too heavy, but just kind of showing you, hey, going from priests, kings in play now, sisters and brothers. And David ruled 40 years, and like it said afterwards, hey, he died. Mm -hmm. That's why it says, so David slept with his fathers. What else? And was buried in the city of David. Uh huh, keep reading. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Uh huh, so he said, look, so David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, and the days that David reigned over Israel was what? Forty years. Uh-huh, keep reading. Seven years reigned he in Hebron. Okay, so now, look, the Bible going to even break it down. Like, he gonna t it's, gonna, it's telling you about David's rulership. And that's why, you know, we don't look at the Bible as a history book. But even history books will tell you things about these kings. Mm -hmm. The Bible, breaking it down for you. It say, look, in the days that David reigned over Israel... With 40 years, seven years reigned he in Hebron. And what else? And 30 and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Uh-huh, and 30 and three years he reigned in Jerusalem. That's that 40 right there. Mm -hmm. And it's even called the city of David, ain't it? That's how bad David was, man. You know, and the Lord really loved David. David made a mistake. I can't say it was a mistake, but David dropped the ball. But... Like the Bible say, hey, David was a man after God's own heart, so much so that the Lord going to bring him up in the resurrection. He's still going he gonna to be king over Israel again, sisters and brothers, but this time with a mortal body. But now let's see who's going to come up after David dies. Pick it up at verse uh, 12. Then says Solomon upon the throne of David, his father. Okay, so now we got Solomon coming up, right? Mm-hmm. It say, then set Solomon upon the throne of David, his father, because that's the next one that's going to come in line after David dies. Solomon going to come up. Go ahead and keep reading. What else? And his kingdom was established greatly. Uh-huh, because, hey, when Solomon came up, he didn't have to do no fighting. You know, David had did all that, but it was mainly peace when Solomon came up. But let's look at some of the attributes of Solomon. Move over to uh, chapter 4. Chapter 4, and pick it up at verse 1, then we're going to skip down to verse 20. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So King Solomon was king over all Israel. Okay, so I just wanted to bring him into the picture. At this point, now, David died, King Solomon, he's in power now, and he's king over all Israel, right? Mm -hmm. 
So let's look at some of the things that came with him. Skip down to verse uh, uh, 20 and read that. Judah and Israel were many, mm -hmm. as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, mm -hmm. eating and drinking and making merry. Mm -hmm. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They bought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. And Solomon's provision for one day was now, now listen to this. Now Solomon ain't no, no, you know, Solomon got respect, okay? But I just want y'all to see this. His provision for one day was what? 30 measures of fine flour mm -hmm. and three score measures of meal. Uh-huh. 10 fat oxen. Okay, this is one day now. 10 fat oxen. Go ahead. And 20 oxen out of, out of the pastures. Uh, and 20 oxen. Go ahead. What else? One day, y'all. <laughs> Go ahead. And 100 sheep. Beside one day. <laughs> I just want y'all to understand, just because we, in a, we look bad now, we at the bottom now, this is what we came from. So it says, look. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour, three measures of meal, 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures. What else? And then 100 sheep. 100 sheep, keep reading. Beside hearts, mm -hmm. and roebucks, and fallow deer, and fatted fowl. Go ahead. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river. Uh -huh. now, now, keep in mind now, he was king over Israel. So you know if Solomon doing good, you know the people in the kingdom are going to be good too now. So he said he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river from what? From Tipsa, uh -huh. even to Azar, mm -hmm. over all the kings on this side of the river. Go ahead. And he had peace on all sides round about him. Right, but we don't know about this, though, do we? We don't talk about this in school. Mm -mm. We talk about Alexander the Great. We talk about the Roman Empire. We don't talk about this stuff right here, sisters and brothers. Not in school. And then in... Then when you go to church, you really don't get that much. You get, you get little, you know, nice little phrases. Like I remember going to church, the woman would get up and testify. You know, back in the day they had testimony service. Lady would get up all the time. She would say, God is good to Israel. God is good to Israel. And God is good to me. That's the only thing I heard about this stuff in the Bible. That's it. I hear nothing else. But it just so happened. All this in the Bible is really talking about the Israelites, sisters and brothers, from Genesis all the way down to Revelations. So he said he had dominion over all the region on this side, the river from uh, Tipsa even to Asa, over all the kings on this side of the river. River, He had peace on all sides round about him. What else to say? And Judah and Israel dwelt safely. Uh huh. Every man under his vine and under his fig tree. Right, right. but look at what he says. He says Judah and Israel dwelt safely. Mm -hmm. In other words, all 12 tribes were chilling. Judah and Israel dwelt safely. What else? Every man under his vine uh -huh. and under his fig tree. Go ahead. From Dan even to Beersheba, mm -hmm. all the days of Solomon. Uh huh. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for now, his chariots. Y'all look at this now. It said he had what? 40,000 stalls. It ain't say 4,000. <laughs> it ain't say 400. It said he had 40,000 stalls of horses. What else? For his chariots. Uh-huh. And 12,000 horses. Right, but we just talked, like, like we was, we, we, we weren't like this, sisters and brothers. We weren't like this. We in this situation now because we disobeyed God. But we weren't always at the bottom. Nobody want to tell you what you were, but we weren't always at the bottom. This, this is what we've been introduced to. Mm -hmm. We don't even got a stall to put a dog in. <laughs> he had 40,000, didn't he? It says Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses mm -hmm. for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. What else does he say? And those officers provided victual for King Solomon. Uh huh. Keep reading. And for all that came unto King Solomon's table, uh huh. Every man in his month, mm -hmm. they lacked nothing. That's right. Go ahead. That's it on that. Yeah. That's all right. Keep reading. Keep reading. Thirty-four. We gotta go all the way down. Go right. ahead. Barley also and straw for the horses, mm -hmm. and dromedaries brought they unto the place where the officers were. Uh huh. Every man according to his charge. Mm -hmm. And what else he notice what the Lord gonna give him on top of that? 
because the Lord asked him when he first became king, what did he want? He didn't ask for anything physical. He ain't want no money. He ain't want no riches. You know what Solomon asked for? He asked God for wisdom on how to deal with his people. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord gave him. Then he added all the other physical things afterwards, but the, he sought the Lord's wisdom first. And it's going to tell you that. What it said 29? And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding uh -huh. exceeding much mm -hmm. and largeness of heart. Go ahead. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Mm -hmm. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country uh -huh. and all the wisdom of Egypt. Right. And, and ain't nobody going to be able to even compare to his wisdom now today. Why is this man, sisters and brothers? So why are we trying to be like the Egyptians? That's why I say, look. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. And Solomon wasn't no Egyptian. So why are we trying to ascribe to being an Egyptologist? Hmm. Why are we getting off into all that stuff? So look, the Lord was mad about that in the first place. What else does it say? Verse 31. For he was wiser than all men. Uh-huh. Than Ethan the Ezrahite, mm -hmm. and he man the Shalko, and daughter the sons of Mahol, mm -hmm. and his fame was, uh, was in all nations round about. Uh-huh. So hey, so, like I say, Solomon was, was well known for being wise, and everybody knew about him. We're gonna see that he's even one of the queens of another nation, she's gonna have to come see this for herself. Because mm -hmm. she heard about it. But she going to come see if this is really true. What is saying 32? And he spake 3,000 Proverbs. Uh -huh, and we know from the book of Proverbs that Solomon is responsible for that, right? Mm -hmm. So he spake 3,000 Proverbs. What else to say? And his songs were 1,005. Uh-huh. Then he got a book called The Songs of Solomon, don't he? Mm -hmm. But even now, the Lord is speaking through Solomon's mouth, sisters and brothers. But he said he spake 3,000 Proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Go ahead and read. And he spake of trees, uh -huh. from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, mm -hmm. even unto the hesop that springeth out of the wall. Uh -huh. So you'll find all these different things in these writings, right? Because Solomon was wise, and Solomon saw different things that, hey, a king being, a king being at the top of it all, look, he can, at the end of the day, he'll let you know when it's all said and done, all these riches I have, when it's, at the end of the day, it's all vanity. Because no matter whether you're wise or ignorant, we all going to meet at one place. And that's the grave. Yes, sir. But he said, he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that spring out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fire. What else? And of creeping things. Uh-huh. And of fish. That's right, because he talked about in one place how, you know, for the most part, a fish is minding its own business. Next thing you know, what happened to that fish? He get Caught up in the net, don't mm -hmm. he? But guess what he did with that 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 uh, proverb? That might be an Ecclesiastes. I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But guess what he did with that? He turned around and compared that to man. Because man, you go going about your day, minding your business. Next thing you know, you caught up in the net, just like a fish. He's dead and on somebody's dinner table. Hey, you dead and in the grave now, mm. out of nowhere. Just happened. wasn't even expecting it. So he said, and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that spring out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fire and of creeping things and of fishes. What else? And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon uh -huh. from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Uh -huh. Now move over to uh, chapter 10. Go on to chapter 10. Let's go look at somebody coming over to see this heard about his wisdom, but got to come see it for herself. 1 Kings chapter 10. Pick this up at verse 1. Go and read it. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon uh -huh. concerning the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. she came to prove him with hard questions. Right, and this ain't got nothing to do with Hala Selassie because they say, well, you know, queen of Sheba and Solomon slept together. Mm. And that's where you get this Hala Selassie, this Rastafarian. You can't read that in the Bible, sisters and brothers. Nowhere. She came over there because she heard about this wisdom he got, and she came with some questions. 
But it said, when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Go ahead and read. What else does it say? And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, uh -huh. with camels that bear spices, uh -huh. and very much gold and precious stones. Uh -huh. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Right. So she came, and she also came with respect, too, right? Because she coming to see a king, so she going to bring some things to show respect. Like when you go visit somebody's house and stuff, a lot of time, first time you go, you bring, you bring something, you know, showing respect. So likewise, but she a queen, so she bringing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what is that? What is saying? Verse three. And Solomon told her, told her all her questions. Right. So the questions that she had, hey, Solomon answered them, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Wisest man in the world. And Solomon told her all her questions. What else did he say? There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Uh huh. Keep reading. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, mm -hmm. all the, and the house that he had built, uh huh, and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants, mm -hmm. and the attendance of his ministers. Now look at this now. Now Queen Sheba, she paying attention to all this. All this stuff that's surrounding him, how it is off, I guess, in the palace in a sense. Looking at his servants and everything, she's amazed by this. That's why it says here in verse 4, And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers. What else to say? And their apparel. Uh huh. And his cupbearers. Go ahead. And his and his ancient by accent accent by which he went up into the house of the Lord. Uh huh. There was no more spirit in her. Oh, here. I mean, I guess he had that swag on him. She just <laughs> she couldn't. Oh Lord, have mercy. She couldn't do nothing else. <laughs> she couldn't do nothing else. Eh? Say so it wasn't no more spirit in her. Mm. What else is it say in verse 6? And she said to the king, uh -huh. it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thine acts and of thy wisdom. Right, because they talked about it. Evidently, word got out, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, look, it was true. Everything they said, it was true, right? But still, it don't measure up to what she's seeing personally. So, Go ahead and read. What else is it say? How be it, I believe not the words until I came, uh -huh. and mine eyes had seen it. That's right. Keep reading. And behold, the half was not told me. Mm -hmm. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. Right. Look, hey, I heard about it, but man, look, me seeing it in person, it don't compare. Don't compare at all. What's she going to say in verse 8? Happy are thy men. Uh huh. Happy are, th are these thy servants. Uh huh. Go ahead. Which stand continually before thee mm -hmm. and, th and that bear thy wisdom. But look at that, though, because that's something for brothers that you, you should be able to take from that. Because, you know, we talk about being heads of the house. Talk about being kings in our house and stuff like that. Well, look, when you come in, like I say, you know, everybody should be happy that you're at home, right? You know, you shouldn't come home as a father. Everybody shut the door and run. <laughs> you better check you. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> Maybe you got a problem. <laughs> Even the dog run. Uh, don't want to be around you. That means you ruling with an iron fist. And you ain't got to do that. So what does say? Where we at? Verse nine. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, verse nine. That's where we at. No, we just read verse eight. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Read that again, verse nine, for me. Right. Happy are thy men. Uh huh. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that bear thy, that hear thy wisdom. Uh huh. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, mm -hmm. to set thee on the throne of Israel, mm -hmm. because the Lord loved Israel forever. Go ahead. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Uh-huh. Go ahead, verse 10. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold and of spices, very great store. Y'all see that? Y'all see that, though? She said in verse 9, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever, therefore made he thee to do judgment and justice, right? Mm -hmm. But Solomon, just imagine us as a nation of people, we would have just stayed in line. You know what I'm saying? You're seeing a small example of it, you know, in that area, how he was known. And he's still known today. But the Lord, you know, we, we would have been the same way. Like, we got the word. You know, Lord, Lord set us up as priests, sisters and brothers. But... You know, we start going off serving all these other guys and stuff like that. The Lord just take all that from us. 
Now we coming back and you can see you can see that knowledge and wisdom starting to come back, our behavior changing. I'm gonna give you an example. You talk to somebody that's not in the word, and you in the word, right? You getting the word from God and notice the difference in your knowledge and their knowledge. And one example, you'll know if they defeat it, because they'll say stuff like this. Why don't you close the Bible and tell me what you think? Because they can't, they can't, they can't fight with this knowledge that God has given us, sisters and brothers. So imagine us as a nation, God giving us this knowledge. It would, you know, that's that's why He said in Deuteronomy, you know, this is our wisdom, the commandments and stuff. Look, this your wisdom. You know, ain't nothing wrong with you going to get education and stuff like that. It makes things better in this land of the Gentiles that we live in, right? But at the same time, you can't beat this right here, though. You can't beat this at all. And you're just seeing an example of that, how much wisdom Solomon had. They had, she had to come see that for herself. They was talking about it, but when she got there, she was blown away by our sisters and brothers. But what it say in verse 10? Go ahead. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold mm -hmm. and of spices, very great store. Go ahead. And precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these, which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. So she must have gave him a lot, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She hooked him up. <laughs> but she was paying respect, and at the same time, like I say, she was amazed to see that. But now skip down to verse 23. Go ahead. So King Solomon exceeding all, thi all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Uh-huh. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom. Right, look at that. It says, so King Solomon did what? Exceeding all the kings of the earth uh -huh. for riches and for wisdom. It say, right, it says, so King Solomon e exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. So why are we trying to go to other nations to get it, though? So I'm saying, like, the Lord gave it to us. You see a small example of it with Solomon, but for... The most part, hey, Solomon went to the same God that we serve, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to get our wisdom and understanding from. We ain't going to get it from all these false gods. We got to stop trying to be like all these other nations. That don't work for us. It don't work for us. The Lord don't like that. He a jealous God. So he tearing us up. What else to say? Verse 24. And all the earth sought to Solomon mm -hmm. to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Right. It, 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 you don't see that about Pharaoh. Even Pharaoh had to get Joseph, didn't he? He's mm -hmm. like, man, you know what? I'm going to put you over my stuff. What happened with, uh, uh, was it Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, uh, uh, Belshazzar, one of them? Put Daniel up there, didn't he? Nebuchadnezzar, put Daniel up there. Like, you got the spirit of God on you. You can do it. But that's what we have to understand. Look, we got God on our side, sisters and brothers. Move over to... Uh, Jeremiah 17, because eventually all this going to come to an end because of our disobedience. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Just so y'all know, it's restrooms on that side. If y'all have, have to go, I don't know if y'all know where they at, but they're in the back. Jeremiah 17. Let's pick this up at verse 19. Jeremiah 17. Verse 19, because, like I say, we was kings, priests. You know, we was doing good for some time. We kept kept messing up with God. Lord kept having mercy. But it's going to get to a point where that mercy going to run out. That grace going to run out, sisters and brothers. And the Lord going to send us into captivity. But the last straw before the Lord do it is he going to try to, the Lord going to bargain with us. And this bargain is going to be based on keeping the Sabbath. If we could just keep the Sabbath, the Lord will have mercy and won't send us into captivity. Jeremiah 17, verse 19, read that. Thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord unto me, mm -hmm. Go and stand in the gate of the, chi of the children of, thy, of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, uh -huh. and by the which they go out, go ahead. and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem mm -hmm. that enter in by these gates. That's right. So now Jeremiah from the star proclaiming what the Lord going to say to him. Keep reading. What it say? Thus said the Lord, take heed to yourselves mm -hmm. and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Now, at this point, we've already went rogue. But the Lord is, you know, trying to keep us from having to go into captivity, sisters and brothers. So like I say, one last straw, one last Call it one last ditch effort. 
to try to save us so we don't have to go into captivity. So he said, look, thus saith the Lord, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. What else he say? Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Uh-huh. Neither do ye any work. Go ahead. But hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. Right. Look, all you have to do is hallow the Sabbath day, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing today, sisters and brothers. All you got to do is hallow the Sabbath day. Like, sometimes we look at the Sabbath as, as not being that important. That's very important, man. I'm telling you. Some, some people are going to hit the lake of fire because they can't keep the Sabbath. First commandment that the Lord gave, after he told you how to deal with him as a God, first thing he said was what? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He didn't say thou shalt not kill. He ain't say thou shalt not commit adultery. He ain't even say honor your father and mother first, did he? Mm -hmm. He said remember the Sabbath day, sisters and brothers. That got to be important. If you see, you have to know that means something if he say that first. Not saying that all the other uh, commandments ain't important. But look here. If you dropping the ball in other areas, if you get to church on Saturday, we can work on those issues, right? You're not going to be able to work on them not being in church. But once again, he said, look, if you just do this, obey it, keep the Sabbath like I told your fathers, but they didn't do it because he's going to tell you that. What it say? But they obeyed not. But they obeyed not. So don't do like them. They didn't obey. Keep reading. Neither inclined their ear, uh -huh. but made their neck stiff. Keep reading. What else? That they might not hear nor receive instruction. That's right. He's saying, look, don't do like them. We had, like I said, we, he trying to save us now, sisters and brothers. But don't do like them. What else to say? And it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith mm -hmm. the Lord. Go ahead. To bring in no burden through the gates of his city on the Sabbath day, mm -hmm. but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the thrones of David, mm -hmm. riding in chariots and on horses. They and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. Y'all see that? Like I said, for the most part, we had already dropped the ball and everything else, right? He turned around and say, if you just keep the Sabbath, y'all ain't got to worry about going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me God is bargaining with people? He bargaining with 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 flesh and blood? But that's how much he loved us, though, right? Like, he's just like, look, man, can y'all, can y'all, can you do that, please? Can you not break the Sabbath? <laughs> let me leave, let me, let me sweeten the pot a little bit for you. You know, I'm going to sweeten the pot. I'm a, uh, let me show you the benefits of you keeping the Sabbath. It shall come to pass if you diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but holler the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes, sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. All we had to do is what? Keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So that should let you know, come hell or high water, how important this is to God, sisters and brothers. What else to say? Verse 26. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, uh -huh. and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, mm -hmm. and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, and meat offerings and incense, mm. and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. If only we will stay, in, uh, only we be obedient, we'll be okay, right? But we're going to see what's going to happen. Going to chapter 18. We're going to see what's going to happen. Eighteen to pick this up at verse one, because if we don't do it, there is going to be a consequence. So what is saying in verse one? Go ahead. The word which came to Jer Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, uh -huh. Arise and go down to the potter's house, mm -hmm. and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Now look at this now. He said, look, arise and go to the potter's house. A, a potter is the one that, that, you know, that mows the clay. Mm -hmm. You know, he forms the clay. That's what a potter does. So if you know anything about God, hey, he talks in parables a lot. 
In the New Testament, he was talking to parables a whole lot, wasn't he? That's mainly how he talked the whole time. But it's the same one in the Old Testament. So he's giving you an analogy or a parable, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be referencing his people. So he said, look, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. What else to say? Then I went down to the potter's house, uh -huh. and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, mm -hmm. and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Uh huh. So he, you know, he kind of got some clay on the wheel. You know the, how the clay be spinning around, and he be working on it. You know, a potter. That's why he say, "Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, mm -hmm. and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Marred mean destroy, right?" Mm -hmm. It was marred in the hand of the potter. What else did he say? So he made it a again, again another vessel. Another vessel uh huh. That seemed good to the potter to make it. Right. So he made another vessel. First one was messed up, marred. So he's gonna make another one. So he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. But just keep this in mind now, because it's gonna tie in anyway. What did it say? Go ahead. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, uh -huh. O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? I told you, he's going to bring Israel into it, because the Lord used different things like that that you can comprehend. He'll use those to really be talking about you sometimes. So in this case, he's talking about his people. Mm -hmm. So just like that potter had some clay in his hand that was marred, then he turned or destroyed, then he turned around and got some more clay and, you know, formed it how he wanted it. He turned around and asked the question, can't I do that to y'all? Mm -hmm. That's why he says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Go ahead and read. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, uh -huh. so are ye in mine hand, mm. O house of Israel. And that's where we, we, we forget this as a people. See, you know, just like that clay in the potter's hand, that's the same way Israel is in the Lord's hand. Why you think we thousands of miles away from home and the Lord is still tearing us up? You done got away from Jerusalem, but you ain't got away from the Lord. though. That's why we can't escape this abuse. <laughs> you can't call the hotline on Jesus. <laughs> you a wife being battered. I ain't making light of it. I'm just saying the Lord is tearing us up. And you can't do nothing about it but bow down and turn back to God. We like to put it on everybody else, want to blame it on everybody else, but don't want to actually deal with the issue. The Lord is the one that's causing this. He said, O house of Israel, can I, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. What else is that? At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation uh -huh. and concerning a kingdom mm -hmm. to pluck up Go ahead. and to pull down and to destroy. That's right. It ain't nothing. All he got to say, and it's over with, ain't it? Mm -hmm. He said, what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. Just like that clay was in the potter's hand. It was marred, wasn't it? It was, it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. But the Lord can do that like it's nothing. Go ahead and keep reading. What else to say? If that nation against whom I have pronounced uh -huh. turn from their evil, uh -huh. I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. But look at what he's saying. All we got to do is turn, all right? Mm -hmm. He's giving you a way out. You ain't got to stay in this uh, uh, predicament. He said, look, if that nation against who I, I have pronounced turn from their evil, I would do what? Repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Right, but just keep in mind we serve a God of conditions, too like to make sure I point that out. We serve a God of conditions. If you do this, then I would do this. If you don't do this, and I, it's just, if you be obedient, then he's going to have some mercy, right? Mm -hmm. Your whole walk to salvation is based on conditions. Like, you got to keep commandments in order for you to make it to the kingdom, right? You know, for the most part, Lord may have mercy here and there on a few. Some people may not know. But you know, so you got to keep commanding in order to get salvation. You can't just live and do anything you want to. But he said, if that nation against who I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. What else to say? And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation uh -huh. 
and concerning a kingdom to build and, and to plant it. Mm -hmm. if, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would, not, I would benefit them. Now look at this. He's saying, if it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good. In other words, he, you know, he offer you, if you do this, then I'll change my mind. But if not, hey, I, I ain't gonna, that, that, that offer I got on the table, I'm going to pull it off the table. Mm -hmm. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. What else to say? Now, therefore, go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, uh -huh. saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise, and devise a device against you. Mm. Return ye now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. That's right. Skip down to verse 15. But the Lord is the one that's behind it, though, right? Mm-hmm. The Lord is the one that's behind it. That's where our issues lie, sisters and brothers. What is saying in verse 15? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, and they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths, to walk in paths in a way not cast up. Uh-huh. He said, look, my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity, right? We may not be doing that today as far as burning incense to vanity, but we definitely worshiping other gods. Because my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense to vanity. They have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. What else? To walk in paths in a way not cast up. Uh-huh. Keep reading. To make their land desolate mm -hmm. and a perpetual hissing. Uh-huh. Everyone that passes thereby should be astonished and wag his head. That's right. And that's almost like they do today, though. You know, we're like a, we're a wonder among the world. But just look at this, though. It's almost like the world is in amazement. Because it's people being God's people. Now you're casting them out for being disobedient. And the people walk by just looking like, wow, isn't that something? That's why the Lord say, look, to make that land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passed thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. What else to say? I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. Uh-huh, because we're going to have to get out of there. Like I said, all the time, this is a holy people tied to a holy land. If you start sinning and going against God, guess what the Lord going to do to that holy people? They got to get out that land. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to see, you know, you're going to see the results of our disobedience. He said, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. What else? I will show them the back. I would, like you say, talk to the hand because they're not listening. He said, I will show them the back. What else? And not the face uh -huh. in the day of their calamity. That's right. The Lord ain't going to even hear. The Lord ain't going to pay attention. You know, you're going to be crying out, calling out to the Lord for help. The Lord ain't going to even listen. Not even going to pay attention. In the day of your calamity. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. What else to say? Verse 18. Then said they, come, let us device devices against them, against Jeremiah. Oh, we can't just change, though, right? We can't just say, okay, we're going to stop sinning. We're going to observe the Lord's Sabbath. We can't say that, though, can we? Mm -mm. They say, you know what? We need to go whoop Jeremiah. He stopped telling us all this stuff. Hmm. That's why I say, look, then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For what? For the law shall not perish from the priest. Uh, go ahead. Nor counsel from the wise. Mm hmm nor the word from the prophet. Mm -hmm. Come, and let us smite him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. That's right. So they're going to, like, in other words, talk against everything he's saying. You know, Jeremiah, he's going to tell you what the Lord say. But like they say here, then said they come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest nor counsel from the wise, and back to what we said earlier about Israel being a kingdom of priests, this is what we're supposed to have, right? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be the one with the law. We are supposed to be the one that give out counsel pertaining to religion, pertaining to the Bible. Hey, you're supposed to be able to come to us and get it. That's why the Lord said he gave the oracles unto us. I'll tell you that in Romans. So they say, come and let us smite him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words. That's like Jeremiah saying one thing. They're going to say something else. You know, the Lord going to send us into captivity. Well, no, he's not. We're going to be blessed. You, you kind of got that going on today. 
They saying in their heart that they are blessed. Don't want to hear the truth, sisters and brothers. Ain't nothing changed. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. We're going to pick this up at verse 8. Psalms 44. In verse 8. When you get that, go and read that for me. In God, we boast all the day long. Uh huh. Talking about us, right? Mm -hmm. He said, Look, in God, we do what? Boast all the day He's long. He's saying, God, we boast all the day long, right? Mm -hmm. In God, we boast all the day long. And that, same thing today. Boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. What else? But thou hast cast off. Uh huh. And put us to shame. Right, because now we're in the, we seen how the Lord had to set up his kings, right? Seen how he put it out there. We be obedient. He's going to make us priests and stuff like that. Well, hey, we're looking at the other part of it now. The part we disobeyed, now we're looking at the results of it. Mm -hmm. So he said, but thou hast uh, cast us, thou hast cast off and put us to shame. What else? And go us not forth with our army. Uh-huh. Keep reading. In other words, we got to fight on our own now. See, we had God fighting our battles for us, but now we got to fight them on our own. He said, he ain't going forth with our armies. What else to say? Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy. Uh-huh. And they which hate us spoil for themselves. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for me. Uh, it's like you raised up as a sheep strictly to die. He said, thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat. I know a brother, brother in Arkansas, he actually has animals on his farm. And he raising them animals to eventually put them on the dinner table. But you look at Israel. Look at what the Lord is saying. Just giving you an example. He said, look, thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat. And what else to say? And has scattered us among the heathen. Oh, because we ain't in the land no more, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, the, hey, the last option was just keep the Sabbath. So we broke that. Now what has he done? He said he has scattered us among the heathen. Where do you think you at? You know, just because you was raised in the south or in the north or wherever you you know, like the claim is home here in America. Look, this ain't your home. You got scattered among the heathen, sisters and brothers, by way of captivity, slave, or uh, slavery, sisters and brothers. Thou hast given us like a sheep appointed for me and has scattered us among the heathen. What else to say? Thou sellest thy people for naught. Oh, wait a minute. He did what? Sellest thou people he for naught. He said, thou sell thy people for naught. Like, you ain't even benefit off of the sale. That's why I tell people, look, you were the product. You weren't involved in the agreement. The agreement that the nations were talking about, it was actually us as the product that they were selling. So how you come over here and try and be a part of it, sisters and brothers? It ain't going to work like that. We came here as slaves because of our disobedience. We didn't come here for a party. You don't go to jail to celebrate, do you? <laughs> you in jail. You ain't over here to celebrate. You over here to turn back to your God. So he said, look, thou sell thy people for naught, and what else? And does not increase thy wealth by their price. Right, like I said, you don't even benefit off of it. You ain't getting nothing off of it. You ain't getting rich off of the slave trade. You know, I hear some people, well, you know some black people had slaves. Well, I ain't never had none. I don't know nobody had no slaves. I do remember there was an African woman that told a partner of mine, he was like, man, I went into the store, and, you know, I was talking to this lady about the Hebrews, and she was an African. She said, yeah, we did have slaves in Africa, and she said, y'all got what y'all deserve. I say, wow, man. But what can you say, though? We really did get what we deserve, right? Not saying them beating on us and all that. I'm just saying we disobeyed God, and he clearly told us if we be obedient, we wouldn't get scattered. We wouldn't get, we would stay in the land. But our fathers couldn't do it, sisters and brothers. And then we get here, and we do the same thing. And then we expect mercy. Hmm. But go ahead and read. What else to say? 13. Mm -hmm. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbor. He said, look, though, it's in your Bible. He said, thou make us a reproach to our neighbors. We want to move in. As soon as we move in, what happens? They move out. They move out. <laughs> Even you move out. I know some people here. <laughs> that live way out in the country, and they tell you because I don't want to be around y'all. <laughs> That's funny to me, though. I, it's funny how it, it don't make sense to me how we came over here as slaves. Now we want to live in a neighborhood where the slave master bought us, and he want to run. Don't run because I'm going to find you. 
I'm gonna move right next door to you. You gonna move? I'm gonna move with you then. Should have brought us over here. <laughs> On the disown us now. Eh? <laughs> it was good when we was working for him, though, wasn't it? But he said, look, thou make us a reproach to our neighbor. Crazy thing about it, it's in your Bible, though. Uh -huh. It's in your book. He said, thou make us a reproach to our neighbors. What else? A scorn and a derision a scorn, to them. A scorn and a derision to them. Keep reading. They're around about uh -huh. us. Uh-huh. Nobody like you, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. Thou make us us a byword among the heathen. Uh-huh. This is where you get all these different names from. Colored. Black. Negro. Nigger. Mm-hmm. Coon. Byword, sisters and brothers. We take pride. I tell people, don't call me black. No, no, don't call me. I'm an Israelite, straight up. Call me by my name. And I'm going to change my last name real soon. I was waiting. I said, I'm going to respect my father because I'm a junior, my son a third, but I can't wait no more. I, I'm tired of it. I got to change my name. I'm going to change it real soon. He probably going to be mad at me. But, <laughs> hey, I, ain't no telling what tomorrow holds. But black in itself, sisters and brothers, black is a derogatory term. All you got to do is look it up. Look up the definition of black. You're going to see all the, all the different things that line up with black being something negative, sisters and brothers. So he said, look, thou make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. Thou make us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. So let's move a little further. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. You know, they have some, they have different examples in movies and stuff. You may see like a, you know, may see a woman, a white lady in an elevator. Black person get on, she clutch a purse. Or you may see some, in a movie or something, they'll show, give a depiction of a black man walking by somebody's car and they lock the doors and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's just, hey, that's, that's, that's a stigma on us, sisters and brothers. But it's going to change. And it ain't going to be like this forever. You know, we've been going through this for some time, and this is just something that come with us because the Lord allowed this to happen. Because the Lord tell you, he's a jealous God. You want to go serve all these other gods? Okay, well, I'm going I'm to bring you to jealousy with a foolish nation. So he brought the Gentiles up over us, sisters and brothers. And you at the bottom. We at the bottom. That's simple. But it's not going to be like this forever. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Pick it up at verse 28. The Lord Look. shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. and blindness and astonishment of heart. Right. So this is where a lot of us wake up and find out about who we are based on these signs in the Bible. That's why I said we're not going to use any artifacts. Because we're going to be able to just identify just by the Bible itself, sisters and brothers. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know, this is where the Lord is going to lay out, lay it out there real clear for us to understand on what we need to be blessed. And he's also going to lay it out there real clear for us, you know, to let us know how we're going to end up under a curse. So... Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, sisters and brothers, you're going to lay it out there real easy. All you have to do is read it and be obedient, right? You know, in our time, you know, back then when Moses was re reciting it to them, all they had to do was do it. But now we're over here in captivity. We got a book. We can read it now, you know. But 1 through 15 is going to consist of the blessing. 1 through 14. 15 down to 68 going to consist of all the curses. Go read the blessings on your own. But what it say again in verse uh, 18, I mean verse 28, mm -hmm. go ahead. The Lord shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. and blindness and astonishment of heart. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday mm -hmm. as the blind gropeth in darkness. Because these signs going to identify who the Lord's people is, sisters and brothers. So now when you read these, you, you'll see how it matches up how, or how it lines up with a particular people. It don't match up with the people that call themselves Jews. Mm -hmm. But he say, look, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. 
some of us don't even pay attention to, what do they call black men all the time? You can't have a conversation with somebody. I sit down, you know, you want to sit down and talk to somebody, somebody from another nation, and one of the things they do is they tell you to calm down. Calm down, just, you know, because we got this, we got this stigma on it. They, they call it an angry what? Angry black man. Don't even see it, though. He said, send your book, though. He said, look, the Lord going to smite you with <laughs> madness, ain't it? Mm -hmm. And blindness and astonishment of heart. What else he say? And thou shalt grope at noonday. And you're going to grope in the noonday. It's bright outside, but you're still going to be groping. Though. What do you mean by that? Because spiritually, you're still going to be lost. That's why he say, look, and thou shalt grope at noonday. What else? As the blind grope in darkness. As the blind grope in darkness. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Uh huh. Keep reading. And thou shalt be only oppressed. Uh huh. And spoiled evermore. Go ahead. And no man shall save you. But the Lord is telling us this before it happens. You know, it's like He warning us and letting us know. Look, just be obedient. You ain't got to worry about this. But if you disobey, look, this gonna happen. And we disobey, and it's sitting on top of us, sisters and brothers. Curses and wearing us like a shirt. Go ahead and read. What else to say? Thou shalt betroth a wife, uh -huh. and another man shall lie with he her. He said, look, you're going to take a wife, you're going to betroth a wife, and another man going to lie with her. Look in history and see what has happened to, sisters and brothers. I think the most recent move was 12 years of slave. Mm -hmm. People don't like to talk about that. They depicted that in that movie, but we don't want to talk about that. They don't want to show kids and teach them what really happened because, you know, it also highlights, you know, the flaws of the Gentiles. You know, but at the same time, in order to identify who God's people is, hey, you got to see who this fits. So I say, look, you're going to betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt build a house, uh -huh. and thou shalt not dwell therein. That's right. You're going to do all that work building a house, and somebody else going to live in it. Because you ain't working for yourself. You're working for the slave master. What else to say? Thou shalt plant a vineyard, uh -huh. and shall not gather the grapes thereof. That's right. Thy not, I'm sorry. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, uh -huh. and thou shalt not eat thereof. Mm -hmm. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, uh -huh. and shall not be restored to thee. Go ahead. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, mm -hmm. and thou shalt have, no non have none to rescue them. Right, and all of this right here, you know, tying back to the land when we did have stuff, hey, they're going to come in and take it. And you ain't going to be able to do anything about it. He said your ox going to be slain before your eyes, thou shalt not eat thereof. That ass should be violently taken away from before thy face. You're not going to eat that. That's unclean. That ox is clean, though, ain't it? Mm -hmm. But you ain't going to eat that either. <laughs> he said you ain't going to eat it. He ain't saying nothing about the donkey because you don't eat that anyway. He used the donkey to do plowing and stuff out there in the field, don't he? He said somebody going to come, come take it. You can't do nothing about it. That ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies and thou shalt have none to rescue them. What else to say? Go ahead. Thy son and thy daughter shall be given unto another people. But who did this happen to? Us. One group of people, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. He said, look, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Go ahead and read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh-huh. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Right, but look, this is the Lord laying it all out. This is history. So that's why I say biblical black history. And the, 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 the crazy thing about this is that the Lord is laying the history out there before it even happens. That's how you know we're dealing with the true and living God, sisters and brothers. So he said, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people, and that I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. What else he say? The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Uh-huh. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Mm-hmm. Keep reading. So that thou shalt, shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which uh -huh. thou shalt see. Uh-huh. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot mm. be healed from, thy, from the sole of thy foot until the top of thy head. So it's like the Lord going to cover us. You ain't going to be able to get away with it. He's going to put sickness on us and everything. Ain't it? Mm. What else to say? Go ahead. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Mm -hmm. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Uh-huh. Self-explanatory. Go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Uh huh. We got different proverbs and stuff like that on us. One of the ones that we like watermelon and chicken. Okay. 
They got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a proverb. I mean, I think everybody like Willowman and Chicken. Why I got to be a proverb with us? Give me something else. <laughs> but, you know, Lord said it's going to happen. Go ahead. What else? 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field uh -huh. and shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them. But shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. I just got carried away. 41, what did it say? 41? Uh -huh, I got carried away. We're supposed to skip down anyway, but go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> thou shalt beget sons and daughters, uh -huh. but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Right, but this is in the Bible for a reason. Don't just think that it uh, just talks about this in the Old Testament, because even Jesus himself said in Luke 21, you know, that we was going to be led away captive into all nations, sisters and brothers. So not, not just some of the Old Testament, you know, this stuff that we're reading about, you know, the beginning of it really started happening in 70 A.D., sisters and brothers, which is really what the Lord was highlighting in Luke chapter 21. But go ahead and read, what else to say? All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall, shall the locusts consume. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. And thou shalt come down very low. Y'all see that today, right? Mm -hmm. Strangers above us, we down at the bottom. Why we can't come up, sisters and brothers? Go ahead. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. So you mean to tell me we, we had the power? We would have been straight. We would have been the ones where you come to the bank, and we can loan out money to them? It would have been that way. Mm -hmm. But we're under the curses, so we got to get everything from them, sisters and brothers. He said, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Go ahead. What else? Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, mm -hmm. and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, mm -hmm. till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm. to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he's commanded thee. Right, but the Lord, ain't, he, he's not going to allow, it's like he ain't going to let up. You know, he said, look, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments, right? Mm -hmm. What else? And his statutes which he commanded thee. Uh huh, go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder mm -hmm. and upon thy seed forever. Right, so, you know, it's going to be for a sign and for a wonder because you're not going to read flat out in the Bible that, okay, the Israelites and Negroes, right? You're not going to read that. But you're going to be able to see some signs that sit on this people to identify who it's talking about. And it's going to be clear as day, especially when we get to the last one. In Deuteronomy, you're going to be able to know for sure who the Lord is talking about. What else to say? Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Uh-huh. So you, he said, look now, I told you God is a God of conditions. Pay attention to what he said. He said, because thou serve not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Like it's a problem. Ugh. Oh, I got to keep the Sabbath again. Mm -hmm. We can't, yeah, this, this sucks. Since you want to have an attitude, you don't want to do it with joy, notice what he said going to happen. Go ahead. And with gladness of heart. Uh-huh, keep reading. the abundance of all things. Right, so since you can't do it with joy, and it's what the Lord going to do. 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Oh, but so you're going to serve your enemies then. That's why I told you we serve a God of conditions, sisters and brothers. He said, therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in what? In hunger and in thirst. Okay, so in hunger, that means what? You got to get your food from your enemy, don't you? Mm -hmm. He said in thirst, that means you got to get your water and stuff from them too, right? What else he say? And in nakedness. And in nakedness, so that means you got to get your clothes from them, don't you? Mm -hmm. Which one of, one of y'all on the Walmart in here? Anybody own a J.C. Penny? <laughs> what about a Sears? Can a nigga get a Target? <laughs> <laughs> we can't, can we? Because that means you got to go to them. So, you know, people be like, well, you know, y'all mix y'all fabrics and stuff like that. You know, you try to bring up commandments to people. People like to say, well, what about y'all? Y'all mix y'all fabrics? I don't own nothing. I, we, look, read that again, man. What does it say? <laughs> Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger. And in thirst. Go ahead. And in nakedness. Right, so look, you got to get it. You, you, you got to go to them to get everything, sisters and brothers. He said, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. And what else? In want of all things. And in want of all things. So they just say stuff like that because they don't want to keep the commandments. You tell them to keep the, we got to keep the Sabbath or 
you know, we trying to keep the laws and stuff, and people that try to get out of doing what God say, they try to throw stuff up. And what about the 613 laws? Y'all keep those? I said, what you worrying about that for? Why don't you start with the 10? We'll talk about that other 603 later on. Mm -hmm. You can't even keep the fourth commandment. And you worrying about the other 613. But that's just somebody trying to get out of doing what God said in the first place. But clearly, he letting you know right here, you're going to have to go to your enemy for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Nakedness, we're talking about clothes. You're going to have to go to them to get your clothes because we don't have nothing because we got the curses set on top of us because of our disobedience, sisters and brothers. But skip down to verse uh, 58. What did it say? Can you finish that one? Uh, yeah. No, nah, 58 is good until, you know, he's going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Okay. Spiritually, he got that on us, and also physically, they would do that also. You know, they would put yokes of iron on our forefathers' necks so you couldn't run, you know. But at the same time, spiritually, look, you got a yoke on your mind. That's why you don't know who you are. Hmm. You know, we come telling you, Israel, you say, I'm a Gentile. Look, you, you, that's a sign of being lost. Hmm. That's a sign of being lost. We, we thought we were Gentiles coming up all the time. Well, we can be a part of the covenant because we Gentile. Look, that don't sound right nowadays coming from the Negro. Because we the Israelites. We ain't Gentiles. Gentiles come out of the seed of Japheth, sisters and brothers. But skip down to verse 58 and read it. Go ahead. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written, of this, of this law that are written in this book, uh -huh. that thou mayest fear the glorious, fear the glorious and, and fear for name the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, mm. and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, mm. and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Of <laughs> long continuance. So look at what he said, y'all. He said, if thou would not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, right, that thou may fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. So this plague that's on the land today, this pestilence that's on the land today, I don't care if you get vaccinated, it don't matter, because I ain't pushing that, because I ain't getting no vaccine. But who is the one behind it? Who behind this? The Lord. So who you need to have faith in? Mm -hmm. Who? The Lord. The Lord, right? Because the Lord is the one behind it. So how are we going to put faith in a man? Because the Lord said you're going to die, you're going to die. I wouldn't take a chance to put a shot in my body that ain't been tested. That I, I ain't going to do it anyway. If you decide to, that's you and your house. But look at who run it all, though. That's what we got to understand. See, we, we need to turn that television off. That's right. Some of y'all get moved by CNN. Mm -hmm. You need to get moved by the B-I-B-L-E. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be moved by. Hmm. Hmm. So he said, look, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. What else did he say? And the great plagues of thy seed, uh -huh. even great plagues. That's right. So the Lord is going to do it. All you got to do is turn back to God. That's going to be your vaccine right there. He said, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed. And uh, uh, even great plagues and of long continuous. Like, it ain't going to just hit our fathers. It's going to be on us way down the line. Mm -hmm. And sore sicknesses. And of long continuance. What else to say? 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Uh huh. See, the Lord is behind it, though. He said, the Lord, he said, moreover, he will bring upon all the diseases of Egypt. If he going to bring all the disease, you don't think he can't cure all the diseases? Y'all going to believe Fauci? Really? This man moving the goalpost. Y'all believe in that? Hmm. You got to believe in God, man. He said, moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou was afraid of. Go ahead and read. And they shall cleave and unto And they going to cleave unto you. Keep reading. What else? 61. Also every sickness and every plague. So he going to cover everything. He said also every sickness and every plague. What else? Which is not written in the book of this law. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until uh -huh. thou be destroyed. That's right. So you can't escape the hand of the Lord. You'd be better off just being obedient and doing what he say. And if it happened to come up on you, hey, let it come on you. But don't put nothing. I wouldn't suggest putting something inside of you because of fear. You can't say to me, I'm going to have faith in God, you know, but you go, you go take something that a man is offering. How is that faith in God? How is that faith? I'm going to have faith in God because I'm already, I ain't sick in the first place. So my faith is that the Lord going to keep me. If the Lord take me out, he just take me out. 
but I'm not going to let a man move me off of fear because God is the one that's controlling all of us, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. So he said, look, also every sickness, every plague, we read out the same Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. What else to say? Go ahead. And ye shall be left few in number, uh -huh. whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude. Go ahead. That's why we the minority. Because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy uh, God. And that's what it's all about, though. So we got to have faith in God. He said, look, you shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou would not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. So that's why you look at the day we at the bottom. We, and if you're paying attention, we are called the minority, ain't we? Mm -hmm. All these kids we have, we still the minority? Yep. Because <laughs> the Lord got it balancing out, don't he? We having kids, but we get knocked off on this side. That's why we fill up the church on Sunday, but we having a funeral home full on Saturday. All because of disobedience. Go ahead and read what else to say, 63. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good uh -huh. and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. Uh -huh. Look at that, though. He said, look, he rejoiced over us to do us good, right? Mm -hmm. But since we can't do what he said, he's going to rejoice over us to do us evil. He's going to rejoice over you to do, uh, it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. And what else? And to bring you to naught. Uh huh. Keep reading. And ye shall be plucked from off the land. Right. You're gonna be plucked. Goest. You ain't that's gonna. You're not gonna voluntarily get on ships, sisters and brothers, because that's what Esau did. They voluntarily got on ships. As a matter of fact, they was waving with their suitcases. Bye bye. That's what they was doing. That didn't happen with us though. Mm -mm. We got plucked off and got put in the bottom of slave ships. It wasn't voluntarily, sisters and brothers. That's why I say you shall be plucked from off the land, whither thou go to possess it. So look, them, these signs don't fit Esau like that, these people that call themselves Jews. Go back and look in history, hey, you'll see that they went up into our land when we got caught off in slavery, and then under the British mandate in 1948, they start pulling people from different countries, putting them inside the land, so they can continue to, to deceive the world. And when I say the people was waving and smiling and stuff, that's what they were doing. They weren't sad and crying and all that like, like our forefathers was doing. They throwing us chitlins and stuff and all type of uh, uh, fire food on the ship. Nobody else went through that but us. What else to say? Go and read, brother. 64. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee, among, scatter thee among all people. But look at what he said. though. He said he's going to scatter you among the people, right? Mm -hmm. Taking you away from the land that, you was, that we were in, which was Israel. You disobey him now. He said, I'm going to scatter you among the people, right? Go ahead and read. From the one end of the earth, uh -huh. even unto the other. Uh -huh. Keep reading. And there thou shalt serve other gods, mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, Go ahead. even wood and stone. That's right. So he ain't just talking about one specific location, right? He's talking about everywhere. He said, look, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. So we're not just in America. Mm -hmm. we all over the place. we scattered everywhere, sisters and brothers. And we serve another God, just like he said, gods which our fathers haven't known. Keep reading. What else to say? And among these nations shall thou find no evil. I told you when, you, when you go to jail, you're not going to jail to party. It's not a celebration. This is what we want to do. We want to come here and get like everybody else. That, that was the problem in the first place trying to look at other people, looking at how they God is and how they nation are. Remember, remember Israel said, you know, raise us up a king like the other nations. But we can't do that. We came over here because of our disobedience and the Lord is whooping us and now we starting to turn back to God. But he said, look, and among these nations shall thou find no ease. What else to say? Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Uh-huh. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Uh huh. What nation you know, for the most part, got to talk to their sons about how to maneuver when they drive? Hmm. You know, who, who else got to have these conversations with their sons about, you know, don't go this way, don't go that way? You know, make sure you're in at a certain time because, because you're worrying about what could possibly happen to them. But he said it was going to happen, right? He said, the Lord said, give thee there a trembling of heart and failing of eyes. 
and sorrow of mind. What else to say? And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Uh huh. Keep reading. And thou shalt fear day and night, mm -hmm. and shalt have no assurance of thy life. That's right. And that cover everybody. We we can't have. We don't even have assurance of our life with our own people, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. What else to say? In the morning thou shalt say, With God it were even. Uh huh. And at even thou shalt say, With God it were morning. Uh huh. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear. Uh huh. And for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. That's right. Because it's going to be bad all the way around, sisters and brothers. It's going to be bad all the way around. He said, Look, in the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were evening. And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For there were what? For the fear of thine heart, uh -huh. wherewith thou shalt fear. Go ahead. And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Mm -hmm. Just imagine being out in the cotton field. Mm -hmm. Or just imagine working for the slave master, though. You know, he ain't finding no ease and wishing it would, wishing nighttime would come. And then nighttime, you got some bad things going on. Wishing the daytime would come. Just giving you a small example, though. But the overall point is that it's going to be bad, period. But what's the major sign? Go ahead and read that. What does it say? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So this major sign, because if you look at 64, which is what I like to point out, in 64 he said he's going to scatter you among all people, right? Mm -hmm. Now in 6 days he's going to tell you how he's going to scatter you. He's going to tell you how you're going to get scattered throughout the whole world. So he said the Lord shall bring thee where? Into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. He said, look, and I'm going to... The Lord going to bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Not talking about the Egypt that he just brought them out of. He's talking about worldwide captivity now. Because like I said earlier, look, Egypt, you know, for us, you know, kind of, it's it just like you see Egypt rings a bell in our mind. It, a slavery, sisters and brothers. Because that was our first captivity. So once again, hey. We done dropped the ball, and the Lord letting us know what the consequence going to be, you know, if we drop the ball at this point. But we done dropped the ball now, and we happen to get taken into captivity just like he said it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You need to go and look throughout the whole world and see who fall up under this condition. Before I even saw this in the Bible, they told me about this in school. They never said that a Chinese person went into slavery by ships. So why are we coming to the word and people like to say, well, Asians were slaves too? No, uh-uh. This wasn't going on in school about history. They were saying that we went into slavery by ships. Mm -hmm. So you start tying yourself back to the Bible. Now they want to make everybody else fit it. No, nah, only one person fit this. Just like one person fit being God's chosen people. So he say, look. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead and read. What else? By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Thou shalt see it no more again. That's right, because you ain't going back home. Once you get carted off in the captivity by ships, that's going to be it. But it only fit one person. You know, you might have had some small nations may have went into some, had some atrocities, a little slavery here and there. But who do you know that's still in slavery today? See, everybody else, for the most part, went back home, man. They back where they spoke. Like, they talk about uh, Japanese. They done got reparations, and they still got a place to call home, don't they? Yep. What about the Negro? Where he at? He's still in captivity, ain't he? Ain't going to be there until the Lord get back. He said, look, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereby I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Talking about is we ain't going to see it no more until the Lord return. Ain't nobody going to be able to do nothing to get you out of this predicament. Thou shalt see it no more again. And what's going to happen when you get there? And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. And that's what I saw as a kid. That's what I saw in school, in American history. I saw the pictures. I saw a woman on the slave block with a baby. And next to, right in front of me, it said Negroes for sale. And some of them even called them like a big, strong black Negro. Good for mating with. Look it up in history, sisters and brothers. But the Lord is telling you this. I don't even got to pull out no books to show you. It's in there. But I'm just showing you out of the Bible. That's why I named it Biblical Black History. Because without you having to look at artifacts, you'll be able to see that it, it, it fits one people. He said, you ain't going to see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies as what? For bondmen and bondwomen. Uh, bondmen, that's a male slave. Bondwoman, that's a female slave. He say you're going to be sold to your enemies, right? So mm -hmm. that should let you know, hey, 
It wasn't supposed to be something where you come over here and start going crazy, trying to make ourselves a part of this wicked system. If anything, you come over here and come out of what the world is doing and turn back to our God. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for because we disobeyed. It wasn't like the Lord was like, well, I'm going to send y'all on a nice little cruise to America and the Bahamas so y'all can have a party. It wasn't like that. It was because we disobeyed and the Lord said, I'm going to tear y'all up. Y'all going to get whooped. And this is exactly what happened. Finish that, what it say? And no man shall buy So look, Martin Luther King not going to set you free. Mm. All these preachers out here not going to set you free. Martin Luther King did what he did, and I do agree that things have, you know, we, don't, we, we in a generation now where we haven't, we don't, we don't see what they saw back then. You know, having to march for rights and being not able to sit in certain places and stuff like that. I mean, it's still bad, especially over the past few years. It, got, it done picked up again, ain't it? You know? But he did the best he could do with what he had. But the point is, he, he ain't going to be able to save us. The Lord going to save us. The Lord going to get us out of this, sisters and brothers. And it's coming soon. Move over to uh, Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. Somebody got to go to work today? Uh -huh. <laughs> right, so we ain't got to rush. Because ain't nobody got nowhere to go, right? But we almost done. You know, we don't really touch on these too much. But uh, it's definitely necessary. Jeremiah 31, because at the same time, you know, we looked at being priests, looked at being king somewhat, looked at our slavery, and at the same time, hey, this is the solution. The Lord going to get us out of this condition. So Jeremiah 31, pick it up at verse 7. Go and read that. What does it say? For thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. sing with gladness for Jacob, mm -hmm. and shout among the chief of the nations. Go ahead. Publishly praise ye and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Uh-huh, because that's going to come. The Lord not going to leave us here like this, just like he saw with what was going on in Egypt. The Lord see the same thing that's going on. He said, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. What else? Behold, mm -hmm. I will bring them from the north country. But well, look at what he's saying. He said, behold, I will bring them from the north country. Go ahead and read. And gather them from the coast of the earth. Uh-huh, because that's where we at. We scattered throughout the whole world among the coasts of the earth. But he said, I'm going to gather them from the north country, and uh, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. What else? And with them, the blind and the lame. Uh-huh. The woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. Uh-huh, keep reading. A great company shall return hither. Right, because look, hey, this captivity going to end soon. That's why you can kind of see the world starting to, it's starting to fall, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. See, most people ain't paying this no attention. America, for the most part, has been ruling by way of somebody that's behind the scenes, though. Rome is really behind the scenes. But do y'all understand that once this crumbles, Rome is getting ready to come back, and Rome ain't going to have that much time. They ain't going to have that much time, but everything is getting set up. Everything getting set up, sisters and brothers, because now it's all coming to an end. The Lord is getting ready to redeem his people, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and keep reading. What else to say? They shall come with weeping, uh -huh. and with supplications will I lead them. Uh -huh. Can't read. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, mm -hmm. wherein they shall not stumble. Go ahead. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Mm -hmm. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. And uh -huh. say, Look at what he's saying, though. He that scattered Israel uh -huh. will gather him and keep him as the shepherd does his flock. That's right, and that's why you turn back to God, because the Lord is one that's behind it all. But he said, look, hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, he that scattered Israel, because we saw the Lord is when that scattered us, right? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he told you how he was going to scatter. He said, you're going to put your own ships. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to get to your destination, and you're going to be there for a while until it's time for him to get us out of this. That's why he turned right around and said, hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles of far off. And say, he that scattered Israel would gather him and keep him as what? A shepherd doeth his flock. That's right. Move over to uh, Jeremiah 16. Jeremiah 16. We're almost done. Jeremiah 16. You tell me you're calling back. <laughs> Jeremiah 16 and 14. <laughs> 
Jeremiah 16 and 14. Let's uh, uh, go and read that when you get it. Mm. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Now, pay attention to what he's saying here. Now, we're talking about something that's going to unfold in the future, right? Coming real soon, though. He say, look, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord lived that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Because for the most part, that's all we talk, especially around Passover, right? Mm -hmm. Especially around Passover, and then when people doing Easter, they'll show the movie The Ten Commandments. And it'll just rehash or talk about Israel being delivered. You know, and that's what we talk about on Passover. We do it according to the Bible. But on Passover, we talk about how the Lord delivered Israel from the hand of the Egyptians, right? Mm -hmm. That's a great miracle that has taken place in the world. Matter of fact, that's still talked about thousands of years down the line. But the Lord is letting us know it's going to come a time we ain't going to even talk about that no more because he's going to do something greater than that. So he said, look, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said. The Lord lived that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Going to come a time we're not going to talk about that no more. What are we going to talk about? What does it say? But the Lord liveth that, uh, brought, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Uh -huh, so this is going to be the conversation. Because this, this right here is going to usurp what he did back then when he opened up the Red Sea. When he brought Israel through the Red Sea and delivered them from the Egyptians. That's a great miracle, but what he's about to do in the future here, this going to usurp that. We ain't going to even talk about that no more. This is what we're going to talk about. But the Lord lived that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and what else? And from all the lands whither he had driven them. And from all the lands whither he had driven them. This is what we're going to be talking about, because that's coming. That's coming, but his people are where? They're all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we think, which is something great, the Lord delivered Israel out of Egypt, and when that, when that body of water was in front of them and that army behind them, look, the Lord opened up that Red Sea and delivered Israel and brought them through on dry land and killed off the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. That's something great that took place, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. But we ain't seen nothing yet. That's really what he's saying. When I do this right here, y'all not going to even talk about that no more. Y'all going to talk about how I got y'all from all over the world. That's why he says here, that's why he says here, but the Lord lived that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he have driven them. And what else? And I will bring them again into their land uh -huh. that I gave unto their father. Right, but that's going to happen. That's what we're going to be talking about, sisters and brothers. That's why this awakening is happening now, because we're getting closer and closer to that time. I remember one of the things I pointed out when I taught this class a couple years ago. One of the things I pointed out I thought was bad, which is bad. You know, they had passed a law that you can... Not only go the, you know, all the, you know, the full uh, uh, term with the child as far as abortion is concerned, you can wait till the child is born and kill a child right then and there. So I use that example of showing what times we living in back in 2019. I taught this two and a half years ago. And it was bad then, but look at where we are now. We didn't have a plague cover the whole world now, sisters and brothers. So the, it's, it's moving even further now. We're getting to the end of it now, sisters and brothers. So all the plan, look, that, all that, your mind should be out the window because our Redeemer is on the way. And he's letting us know that. But this is what we're going to talk about. Psalms 126, last place. We're going to talk about how he has delivered us from all over the world. But just pay attention to the signs because it's getting a whole lot closer, sisters and brothers. Psalms 126. Last place. And I know it took some time on this class, but look, we don't spend too much time looking at our history as a people, sisters and brothers. So we just try to get much as in, as much as possible in when we have opportunity. 
Psalm 126, we'll pick it up at verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, mm -hmm. we were like them that dream. Uh -huh. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Mm -hmm. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. Uh -huh. Look at that. Though. He said, because, you know, we, we in and out of situations, right? Like we're in a situation now we need to be delivered. But it say, look, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Because we're happy, right? Lord delivered us. You know, you got laughter going on. It's a joyous time. And our tongue was singing and said they among the heathen. This is what the heathen was saying about us and our people, right? The Lord have done great things for them. He's going to do the same thing mm -hmm. this time. What does it say? Go ahead. The Lord has done great things for us. Uh-huh. Whereof we, were we are glad. Uh-huh. Keep reading. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, mm -hmm. as the streams in the south. Go ahead. That they sow in tears shall reap in joy. But look at that, though. Because we're in a situation here. We need to be delivered, don't we? And it's going to happen. But this is our prayer. It's like you say, look, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south, that they, sow, the, uh, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Because mainly that's what it's been for us, right? Mm -hmm. All we know for the most part is, you know, destruction. You know, we try to come up. It's hard to come up. Can't get ahead. Got nations working against us. Then on top of that, hey, you know, God is, you know, running us down, beating us up, you know. But we turn it back. But for the most part, this is what we experience. But he letting you know it's going to change. It's not going to always be like this. That's why I say they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. What else to say? He that goeth forth and weeping mm -hmm. and weepeth, bearing precious seed, uh -huh. shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, uh -huh. bringing his sheaves with him. That's right. So I hope somebody got some understanding of Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, Our prayers that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of the lessons are available. Please pick your, pick, place your order in the offering box along with your donations and pick up your DVD CD up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune into Thy Kingdom Come Television, which airs in various locations. Also join us for question and answer Bible study in about an hour from now. And every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via live stream and or teleconference at 860 970 Zero zero one zero, access code three four three five three one three three four pound. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium or speak with Brother Tony or Brother Anthony. On the first Sunday of every month, we broadcast the Bible in plain view. This broadcast gives brothers an opportunity to read and or teach a short thirty minute class. If you are interested in, in helping, please let us know. The following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight fittingly, fitting, overly baggy, sagging, revealing should, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all head coverings, and women should wear a head covering such as a hat or a scarf, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 through 7. If your child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the other room next to the door. Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. All right. Uh, there's a few announcements. Y'all keep Brother Johnny in your prayers. Uh, he taught his first class. Him and Ariana flew out to uh, North Carolina today Amen. for him to teach his first class. Y'all definitely uh, keep him in your prayers so they can have a safe trip back. Uh, also, uh, I think Israel gives back tomorrow. Is that the case? Okay, so y'all see Sister Sydney. Uh, who else help you with that, Sister Michelle? Do you help her with that, Sister Michelle? Oh, okay. Well, that's tomorrow, so if any sisters want to help uh, with that, that's definitely needed, um, helping the people out downtown. Also, anybody need any feast letters, let me know so I can direct you to how you can get them so you can get off, because that is a Sabbath, so you're not supposed to be working. Um, letters period vaccine letters you need those let us know about that also we may do the we may do trumpets a little different this year um, we may just do refreshments we're gonna eat now you know what I'm saying <laughs> but 
we don't want to keep the church this way for a whole month. So we going to change it up. We'll probably with the tabernacles. Uh, that's how they do it in Gary anyway. So we, we, we the only ones been kind of going rogue. So we just going to do it like, like they do it at the headquarters up top. So um, I have more details about it. But we're still going to eat, though. We're going to always eat. Remember the first time we, I went to uh, Philadelphia, Elijah said, they're going to have refreshments. They did not have no refreshments. Israel don't know how to do refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't talking about peppermints <laughs> and peanuts. We're going to have some food. We just may do everything over there just to make it like a little more casual. We can hang out, you know what I'm saying, so it don't have to be so much of a cleanup process afterwards. Um, and then really save everything for the last day. I mean, the last feast, which is tabernacles. That's when we'll probably rearrange everything in here. That way we won't have to keep this like this for a whole month. Because mm -hmm. when we change it, you know, y'all coming in here, table set up like this and the cloths and all that. Look, y'all going to be uncomfortable because y'all know how I am. So we don't want to do that. I don't want to be saying stop this, stop that. We ain't got to do that, y'all. We just set up some over there. We eat and stuff, hang out and chill or whatever. Come in here, you know, chill out or whatever. And then when we get down to tabernacles, like I said, then we'll change everything around. It'll be like that the whole eight days or whatever. So, but other than that, uh, Q and A about four thirty, and I think that's about it. Am I missing anybody? Keep Sister Sydney family in your prayers. The Cannon uh, family uh, lost the grandfather last week. Other than that. Uh, Y'all get your face up. We're going to face Jerusalem close out. And Jeff is going to grill for trumpets. <laughs> Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. And give thee peace. And give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. And I will bless them. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> what you want, Junebug?